everybody. Welcome and good evening. Turn your, your skin off. Tear off your skin now on Friday night. At least for now, we'll see how it goes, right? And I don't have any skin fact tonight because I'm in a sour mood and you have to deal with it. So I'm just going to bring my, uh, I guess, my panelist tonight right away. With me, Justin and Phil the Trill. We're hey. having a vote pro skin advocate. Um, what? I have a skin fact. Yes. Uh, research says that skin tags are an early onset sign of diabetes. Oh, if I heard about notice, that. Uh, like skin tag, yeah. If you start to notice skin tags, do a detox, and you can avoid getting diabetes. Yeah, smart. Well, you should uh, watch uh, your your consumption of sugar anyway. So, where's my pop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, who got skin tag? Phil, you got any skin tag you want to share with us? Um, not one that I, <laughs> that I want to share. I, mean, I have one in my armpit that I've been neglecting. Oh, really? Yeah. It's pretty terrible looking. <laughs> cut it off. Pull it tight. Cut it off. It'll bleed mm. for a little bit, but trust me. I don't know about that. This is not a medical show. We're here to talk about gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the appearance, this is not a medical show. <laughs> don't take a recommendation. Hello, Doc Flamingo and uh, Nicholas. Doc! How oh, you've been? Nick. Yeah, Doc Flamingo. Everyone so, else. Topic of the night. Yeah, every, everyone else that didn't say I in chat. Yeah. Bunch of savage. I guess probably me and you. And... <laughs> we no, don't I have no pull up the tab yet. Hmm? Oh, I there you go. The tab yet. I have it pulled up. So I could like the stream. I'll do that when I find something worth liking. Look at that. Zonala, I don't think I've seen your name before. Yeah. 2am, hello from German land. Mm. Hello. Good night. <laughs> uh, I, I better not. <laughs> There's a rule <laughs> in the description that is specifically yeah. for me. I know, I know, like the, you, you know about like what, 14 words in, in German? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not go there. <laughs> the, the Das Führer did nothing wrong. <laughs> All right. So the topic for tonight, good and Abin, uh, yeah. The topic for tonight, I wanted to, uh, to come back to, uh, maybe link to the recent event uh, about playing a character and what I was talking about that, like because it seems pretty basic, but I think it needs to be to be talked about a little more, right? Playing a character, not just playing a character sheet. Sure. And I got to admit. <laughs> I've been staying away from uh, YouTube quite a bit lately. Uh, people have, might have noticed my absence in the various chat and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, well, you know. But I did watch a Jenny D video. Now is the time to say it. <laughs> <laughs> He's found a new love. No. <laughs> but uh, this is where you find that. That's very heterosexual of you. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? Have, no. have you listened to Jenny D? <laughs> yeah. Liking woman, what's more gay than that? <laughs> I think the great uh, Gavin McKenna said the gayest thing is seeing a heterosexual couple in public. <laughs> <laughs> they act super gay to each other. Yeah, well, Fuck you know what? <laughs> what was in his butt at the time? That's the question you gotta know. <laughs> oh. Let's not talk about Gavin now. Especially if he's not here to defend himself, right? <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> it is not dishonorable to prevent Gavin McGinnis from defending himself. That's what Thurs does, does to a man. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm so, uh, I, I'm so low now that I'm fucking like relying on uh, Gen Z's video, right? No, but on this one, like she was actually like giving not complete shit advice. Oh. So I thought it was interesting. It'd be interesting to uh, talk about it for a bit. Do you want to go straight into that, or you want to talk a bit about it before? And oh, you've I think been you have to go into it now. I mean, you already teed yeah. it up. I don't know. All right, okay, we can do that. I just want to say she is gonna... a paper bag beauty. Oh, are we going to watch? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just going to say to uh, Zonalar, say found you through one of those Black Lodge games stream for so first time catching. Yeah, I was uh, I was on Black Lodge stream, Black Lodge, Black Lodge game stream, uh, not this week, the one before. And I'm yeah. always in their chat. You know, they're the one awesome. that uh, 
Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm probably making it yes. Is that still a thing? Oh. <laughs> yeah. It All right. Let's. Uh, what? Oh, amazing! Atheist put a banana up his bunghole, or Gavis put a piece of rubber up his bunghole. Yeah. But you, know, you say that this is not a pretty girl. Come on. I'm just saying she would Stabby. be more attractive with a bag on her head. We no, she'd be all right if she stopped doing like this. Too. Anyway, like it's not about like her, her look. Right? Obviously, like she'd be like do better well, if she didn't have like, the green hair and eyebrow and stuff like that. And also, like she's post wall, so what does it matter, right? Well, <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not super on that wall train. I have no no problem with a woman looking her age. As long as she's under, yeah, no, like uh, looking, under looking, her, looking her age. Look, I don't have a problem with women looking her age either. Like, I actually am in favor of that. Like, I prefer a woman like looking her age, and like, I'm, I'm not a fan of like dying. You know, you get gray hair. You know, we all get older. Get over it. It's not a problem, right? You get like yeah. wrinkles and stuff like that. No problem there. But at some point, also, like, I, you know, if you're not anyway, if you're not like in age to have to bear children anymore, stuff like that, or if you get like two to bear many, right? At some point, you kind of fall off my radar i'm not yeah. looking at you in, in so now we, we're we talked a lot about her look and, and her age and stuff like that but that's not the point here tonight like we are to talk about what she's saying right let's try to be yeah hateful yeah we're, we're here to be hateful not big no. <laughs> i put the subtitle on because like uh, uh she can be a uh, hard to uh oh also i don't have i don't have like headphone on so now i need to mute her so I only have to rely on the subtitle and my amazing memory of what she said when I watched earlier. Let's play that and uh, wave at me if you wait. If I if I mute her, oh no, wait, that should be I'll right. Let you know you if I, hear her? Her. I cannot hear. Her. I cannot hear her. Ah, shite. That's gonna go be. Get, a go get your headphones, slacker. They're broke. They're broken. You only need half of one. Yeah. Uh, no, they're, they're completely broken. Oh. I have also never really watched uh oh, or maybe, oh, video wait. of Panini. No, no, I just remember I just remember one thing. It's about as long Stream as Yard ever. won't play audio if you don't play through Chrome. So we'll do that. So you gotta sh take it off a of brave. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's my mistake. And it's a rookie mistake. This is a professional show. I, I didn't even have that. Chrome on my PC anymore. Yeah, I wish I, I, I only keep it for Stream Yard. Mm. Pew, pew, pew. I keep it for YouTube. Can we let's just do a quick uh, room commentary? I, I dig the aesthetic. Yeah. I, how do you feel about that wallpaper, though? It's okay. It is very fake looking. It is very she, fake she, looking. She has the budget to go to Home Depot and get the fake. Uh, the exterior brick, you know, they, they got the slates. Yeah. For like 60 bucks a sheet. She could spend the 500 bucks to do that wall and that stuff. And it would look like real stone because it would be real stone. Apartment. So what? Put it, probably ran. Uh, I like attach it to some uh, plywood and just tack it to the wall. Yeah. Put on, put on mm. some French cleats for. Uh, Mr. Max, there. <laughs> not what French cleats are. <laughs> I'm a big fan of French cleats. Hey, table run a crispy. Yeah. Hey, no. hey, look at that. I found some Al Vonani. Vanoni. Excuse me. <laughs> he just found a fucking $200 pair of headphones. Oh. Hello? 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 I can hear, hear you. you. I think it's Fuck fine. Thing. Kind of work, but it's very quiet. I have a tendency to play devil's advocate, so when people when everyone shits on Jenny D, I'm like, is there really anything bad happening here? Because no, it, well, it's just kind all right. of average content. It's fine. Yeah, I agree with you there. I certainly make worse content, that's for sure. So you agree you agree the great content. I know. I couldn't I can't yeah. lie. Fake uh, false modesty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's play that. Now I can hear, I guess. Can Hello, friends. I'm starting a new campaign right now, and it has me thinking about how starting a new campaign used to be kind of awkward. There was this steep roleplay curve at the beginning. Have you ever experienced that? Sometimes it took weeks. 
So have you ever experienced the steep role play curve at the beginning of a new campaign? Where like, oh, people don't role play, they don't know what the character is. Certainly. Certainly? Yeah. My character like, is cake. Um, I find that t figuring out what the personality is takes a, <laughs> takes a minute, you know, and you fit. Mm. It's kind of like you're playing it off of other people. You know, yeah. Figuring out I the could, dynamics of the party. I, I, I could see that. I can see that if you're deep into emotion. If you what? Yeah. Deep into I'm, emotion. <laughs> I'm just fuck, I'm fucking deep into tell. immersion. Emotion. Emotion. Yeah, I'm, I know what you said. I'm saying immersion. Yeah. yeah. I'm fucking with Phil. Okay. Why? Are you? <laughs> no, but I, I um Yeah. Like yes, it does take a minute to figure out who your character is and shit, right? Table yeah. runner crispy says never. But uh, especially if you're surrounded by a bunch of people who aren't um, role player, yeah, are, are yeah. noobs, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but it, it, like usually by the like after like maybe fifteen minutes of the first session, you should have an idea already, right? Unless mm -hmm. your session goes nowhere and nothing's happening, and you're just like stuck in a tavern with like like then maybe it takes or, a long, or a a longer, or you're just getting like. <laughs> half an hour of a lore dump and exposition, right? I yeah. find that um, it's, yeah, I don't know if I'd call it a learning curve, but I find I that wouldn't. in that first 15 minutes, you get that pillar that you kind of hang everything else off of. And, yes, exactly. And you should come yeah. to the table with an idea of who your character is going to be. Sure. And that's something I want to talk about uh, a bit later as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a good idea. That's one of the benefits of yeah. the practice session too. All my characters suffer from multiple personal disorder for the first two or three sessions. Yeah. Good evening, all. Good evening, Alcyon. Alcyon. I'm Alcyon. currently I'm currently playing a character who's obsessed with cake. Yes. Yes. Th this but is you do gimmick ranger. stuff. No, I I do. I, I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I was I, I was having them yell at another character for giving him a a, a muffin because it wasn't cake. Which was fun. How long did it take you to figure out that uh, aspect of your character? Uh, About 30 seconds. But yeah. ma mainly it was based on me actually eating a piece of cake during the first session. Yeah. You roleplay yourself. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, see, uh, let's see how she solved this uh, steep learning curve of roleplay. The roleplay wall. Do you think she's mislabeling it? Or do you think she genuinely thinks there's a steep learning curve? I think she, I think she thinks there's a steep learning curve, okay. but no, I think she's mislabeling. In, I think she does think there's a, a steep learning curve to role play because I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if she's figured it out yet. But yeah. I think in that case, that's not what she's talking about. She's mm -hmm. talking about like uh, getting into character, immersion, really... figuring out where your character is. So let's yeah. see what she said. Or even months for months. a campaign to really feel like it was hitting. Like even months. one shots wouldn't click until we were like a quarter of the way through, which feels so crappy when you have limited time. But that doesn't really happen to me anymore. And that's because I learned this one super simple trick, and now I use it for every single game. You know that moment when all the PCs are finally in the same room and Ooh. everyone's described their characters and introduced themselves, and maybe you've even already. F so yeah, this moment at the beginning of the session. Sorry, I got distracted right then. Why? What was she saying? <laughs> you say, oh, she, you know this moment where like uh, the PC are all finally in the same room, and uh, and now like everybody's describing themselves and uh, basically like doing the Lord dump of character. Like yeah, we all know this moment, right? Oh, I'm wearing a. What's your Lord. story, traveler? Exactly, like man, like what? Is nothing happening? Your character are just there, like talking about themselves. Yeah. They just meet, like, oh yeah, I was raised by wolves, and now like I yeah. can speak uh, Lupin and whatever. Like, you know, just like is that people like that's what people do? Of course, hey, guys. Like, yeah. The room's filling with water. Maybe we should do something about it. Yeah. Well, you know, I was uh, well, in the water once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let me tell you about my story. My fa my father died at sea. Here's what I'm wearing. <laughs> But have you guys never gone to the bar with a bunch of friends? You, you do sit around and shit talk. We shit talk, but we don't yeah. like, like, you know, I've been like, I, I hang out a lot in bar, right? And I often yeah. go to bar alone. Well, I used to often go to bar alone. Yeah. No, I live in a place where like bar art to come by. And I just, you, you go there, you sit at the bar and then you start shit talking with people at the bar, right? 
Yeah. The first thing I do is not like, oh, like I, I'm, I'm, I don't tell them anything about my personal life, right? I don't, I don't expose myself to them. Yeah, right? it's not a thing. Not, men not do. like a, not in that, yes, in that sense. But it's you know, a women talk. You, you Wait, can, you I can build, know. build moments uh, of companionship by, by, by having those moments in the bar. As you don't want, you don't want the whole fucking session one after the other to be that because then you're, 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 you're. You're breaking the point of storytelling, which is the standard, you know, but then what, you know, like you need to have some sort of progression, yes. which, which makes sense. So you don't want to be there the whole time, but it's okay to have those moments here and there. It's okay, but it's also okay. Because, like, I, like, think, it, I think that shouldn't be in the beginning either, right? It's like once you did something together and now you build a report. Now you can have those. I, moments, I right? kind of disagree with you because it, it gives oh, you, you that that space to discover the character that you haven't fully thought of yet, right? Like so, it gives you a moment to to be in the in the skin of your character. When you say it gives you the chance to discover the character, you're talking about the player for their own character. Yes. Oh, okay. It I think you can discover much more by doing right, and and I think yeah. at at that point, that's probably like a GM issue. Like that when you when you start a new campaign and stuff like that, like get the ball rolling, right? Just like have something happen. Just don't like, oh, you're all in the tavern and you're waiting for the wizard. And now like I'm only gonna bring him like an hour in the session. So now you have to role play amongst themselves. You know what? Do first and then you can role and then the role play will come. And the role play should come to doing as well. Yeah. And of course, Jenny D, when she's talking about role play, she she does this thing that I fucking hate about this dichotomy between like combat and role play like and and action and role play like role play is something separate that you do like oh now we have like a role play session oh now we have role play in our session well yeah always be in role play you should always be in the mindset of your character and stuff like that right yeah when you act say, um, but th th a good this part is... of the uh a good part of like shows that you watch if you want to compare like a good story that's getting developed in role playing game is People don't know the other characters when they're yep. doing action. So it's like you're finding out all these things about these other characters while they're doing things. Yes. Once they all know each other and they're all friends, shows mm. typically get worse, I find. like uh, Well, the, the, the like, relationship oh, needs to evolve you. as well, right? But a lot of, a lot of also like often, often yeah. time, like they have, they have some idea for the beginning of a show. And then when it's established, they don't know where to go after that. Yeah, yeah. but you got to replicate. I, I want to replicate that in a little bit. Well, I don't want to know everything about your character. Like ever. yes, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, no, I want I want to learn about your character by him acting, by him like doing yeah. stuff, right? And when you act, when you do stuff, that like that is still role play because like, are you gonna act brave or are you gonna act cowardly or are you gonna act, you know, like all those kind of things? Like, are you doing something rash or are you gonna be prudent? Like, I learn about your character while you're doing those stuff because you are role playing, and it's something yeah. also a problem we often don't we see with people that are not role player. Their character are always going to enact the virtues and and qualities that are needed for the current scene, right? Yeah. Like they don't have a character, and that's what I want to talk about, about today. But like we'll come back to that later. Well, there's there's the concept in writing of of the the essential plot arc, which is the promise, the the progress, and the payoff, right? The, the three piece where, where you, you 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 have like an idea of something then you work towards it and then you deliver it and and i think that's the problem phil was describing with most shows is you get the promise and then you work towards it a little bit and then they pull it away from you instead of delivering yeah and it, it's very important to always deliver and end end that storyline you you get that a lot with with inter intercharacter relationships because they they want to stretch it out as long. Oh, we got another season. We need to stretch this story out. Yeah, we got yeah. another season. We need to stretch the story out instead of just delivering and coming up with a new one. Yeah, exactly. At some point, it, it does lose it lose its uh. You know, you say oh, yeah. I'm always like bait and switch, bait and switch. Right? Th there's there's only so many times Joey and Potter can decide to go with Pacey instead of Dawson. <laughs> I I wouldn't know what you're talking about there. Oh, oh. Uh, actually, two of my favorite shows uh, go against that: Farscape and Burn Notice. Like the lead characters are, yes, but basically sleeping with each other. Yeah, in the first but that's delivered, right? It's, it's great. Farscape. 
Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the one with the, the, the I just watched it. Uh, with the feel the trill icons come from Farscape. What? Feel the trills icon you use in chat come from Farscape. That's true. Yeah. So well, there you go. Well, I never watched uh, an episode. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't but... like show with Alien. Yeah. Let's get through this. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas Camargo said, "What's that? Was what is that thing? A, a third combat? Like you had? We talk about like the, the yeah. three pillar of explore of a role playing game. It's all this combat, exploration, and role play. It's like, like three different games. Yeah, but they 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 are not. You know, there sh there should be overlap between those two. Like, and especially like in the role play, should overlap the other two, right? What? And that's yes. that's that's designed through your mechanic and your." your your language in your book and the the culture you breed in your community right like wait the... let me let me let me post that uh that did i, I post the link earlier get jenny d on board with yeah i was like way up there yeah i did post the link earlier not oh, i posted a discord link but i didn't post the link for that show okay yeah let's me do that you, you don't want to join up. the show I post the link in the chat there. Uh, I need to know who you are, obviously. <laughs> yeah, we we don't want to have uh, have some of the decent sound. We don't we don't want to have a shadow production around here. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> read the rules in the description description box. Did did you add no there nudity? You <laughs> did you add no? <laughs> no. Hey, uh, what hey guys. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? Well, your sound is, uh, is, is, is crunched there, no? Was it? Yeah. Is my sound bad? Hold on, I was having trouble with it. It sounds too loud. It's too it loud. Sound like again. you're not using your uh, regular microphone. Is like, your, uh, are you on the right input? Spurging it out. Hold on. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you it's got not a working. Right let's while your... while Crispy fixes it. Let's Multiple. listen to Jenny D. Yes. What Crispy was saying also like a 685 subscriber, yeah. We're reading level up. Not gonna make it. That shouldn't be possible. Well, you know, I'm gonna say something about uh, life on easy mode. But... <laughs> let's do some. Let's press press play a bit. Yeah. Fought something together, but now you're having that weird conversation where everybody is trying to find in-world reasons to team up while still being true to their characters. The players know that this is their adventuring party, but the characters usually don't yet. So how do you get past that new acquaintance? Test, test, test. Acquaintance? Well, it's a pretty simple test, 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 test. You're it's not new acquaintances. It's the same. You bro. already have relationships yeah. with Freak. people before the events of the campaign. It's not and that that's bad. It. Great. It's, not, it's not that bad, Chris. You just make sure you uh, you you set up your uh, auto adjust volume. Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I did it for you. Okay. Professionalism. There you go. <laughs> Say something. How's that? That's that's Better? all right. That's okay. Yeah. 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 That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 da. There you go. Okay. How are you feeling, Nate? There, crispy. You yeah. A good yeah. Night? I'm ha I, I was having. Well, no. I did my taxes today, and now I'm oh. fighting with the stupid microphone. So. Okay. No, yeah, I'm you like, look a lot, yeah. a lot more madder than normal. Yeah, that's true. Crispy I have, I have to shave. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got like a German like evil here. crispy over here. <laughs> That's right. I'm the, I'm mad now because we're watching. Are, a, are we trying a new person in? Let's try that. Hello, Zandalar. Are How you doing? Welcome. You're muted, muted, bro. Yeah, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Hello. Let's see if this works. Yes, it does. Works. Okay. Wait. So welcome. Are you a fan of Genity? That are you? Are you gonna show your penis? No. <laughs> Please don't. It's the real well, usually when they, all, well, when they already show their hear face. you over the stream instead of the actual stream yard. What's oh, really? happening? I don't know. But that's gonna that's not gonna work because you have like a six second delay or something like that. See if the tab is muted. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it the audio through the monitor, which has no speaker. So I couldn't hear. I love technology. Yeah. Don't Hello. you? Hello. Hello. How do you say your name? Zonalar? Is that it? 
Yeah, it's on alarm. Okay. Yeah. I'm just and gonna call you. Is that okay? You're right with that. Yeah, it works. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. A fan from the Black Lodge game that uh, finds its way over here, right? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I've I've been yearning for like good role playing content. I just heard the same stuff over and over again and stopped listening to figure yeah. out my own my own GMing style. And then I found Black Lodge games and it was like, uh, you know, it it was very uh, what's the word like? I I was bristling at first because you know. <laughs> Telling, telling everything you're doing is wrong. Yes. So, but that also made me think about what am I doing and is it right? And learning that there's much to improve on. Yeah. Well, like which makes the hobby fun. Yeah, we're like we're, we're very welcoming of people like trying to improve themselves. That's the whole point of that. Like that's why I started my channel. Like I was like kind of like you. Like I didn't yeah I didn't find out the content that I would. I was looking for like I, I was listening a lot to adv of advice and you look at all those big channel and they always say the same yeah. thing over and over again and a lot of it is like you know what if you do that in your games it's actually gonna make your game worse it's like counter advice from my own experience from playing those games for a long time right so i said you know what maybe i should put my voice out there, out there. and uh and there's that and then i found yeah. the after word and all those other guys around here right but it was great one to improve themselves is very respectful respectful being Some able to all that advice kind of sounds the same like they all it's kind of yeah. weird how everyone kind of agrees on the other side you know they always repeat the same thing that they heard over and over again right and you see the, the yeah. contents always it's always the same listicle and they're always like same uh oh here's like a you know just like no original thought of in time it's i i often feel like yeah you can do whatever you want like yeah Literally, your imagination is the limit, and I feel like, well, if I can do everything, I need to be prepared for everything for my players, and then I'm too paralyzed to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you're gonna go in the railroad, right? You're just like, you know. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta sit back and let the wave come to you. Yeah. Just gotta redefine what preparation is. So what do you think, of the guy so, here about that? Uh, when he was saying there, like, where, oh, maybe you have your first combat together, like. Uh, presumably, like she, uh, if it was a media rest in media rest uh, start, but then you have to, uh, and the players know this is the adventuring party, but now the character don't, and you have to find this awkward moment of working together. What do you think of that? It's definitely conventional wisdom. Yeah, this is safe advice. That's yeah. all that is. Um, I, I mean, I think we do that. We're Players eventually, uh, yeah. Players eventually like uh, get to work together. Will meta game to get a party going. There you go. That's uh, what I was looking for. You know, like I'm I'm not a guy that's against meta gaming in all sense, right? Sometimes I think it's very useful, like especially like mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing the four hour traveler session. I was like kind of meta gaming in a sense, trying to find opportunity for our characters to get together because we all started separated, right? I, I hear where you're going mm -hmm. on that sense. I say, you know what? My character would have a reason to go that, that way as well, right? So, yeah. Well, it, it depends on like how you're meta gaming, gaming yes. right? Like it, like you said, if, you, if you're looking for, if you're looking for opportunities to, uh, like I said, uh, move the story forward, yeah, that that's one thing. Like that's part of the, the telling of the story um but if you're metagaming to be able to one hit a tarask in in yeah. third level that's that, the metagaming that's... to win right you're missing the point yeah, of the game yeah, yeah. like you know the, the thing the thing that makes role playing games so so beautifully unique compared to all the other types of storytelling is the the trope of the hero always living at the end is not guaranteed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, that, that's that that's the thing that makes it uh, in undeterminate outcome. That that, that is that is the, the uniqueness of this 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 type of storytelling. I, yep. I don't know. I got a different take. I I don't think it's metagaming uh, to throw players into like at the beginning like because we don't usually start in a stupid tavern or something you start with the drop pod falling onto the planet well that's just and, and then it's the then it's life and death 
and yeah. you don't have to meta game. Like I, I can't. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I don't. I'm trying to think of scenarios where Phil, uh, Max, and I have been in a game where we had to like suspend what our characters would normally do in a believable way because we know we have to be together. Well, that's the thing that what you were touching there. Like we say, you say in a believable way because we find a way that is believable. Right. But I don't find that is. Find like it's reason. not to me. That's not a. It's not so much a metagaming. It's just this would make sense that you and I would be together because mm -hmm. we're the two werewolves that are dispatched to go and and help yeah, out yeah. in this one thing. So a like, pack. it's like I, we're not having to shoehorn things in. Mm -hmm. It's already yeah, if you get a good premise, then you certainly don't need it's it. It's already but... it's understood as the premise to begin with, right? It's not mm -hmm. like oh well, I guess you know normally I would I would I would attack you on site, but because we're we don't want to be you know jackasses to Phil because he's put some effort into this. We'll just not do that. You know, yeah, we don't, should do don't that, do that, but that we're not going to do that. But <laughs> you'll still be mad like, and he'll uh, slash our tires. Please be jackasses. To me. Like even in the <laughs> in the last in Monday's game, right? At mm. some point, like where you and I were separated from the rest of the group, mm -hmm. and. We did discuss a bit, and then we kind of find a reason that our character would want to go help those guys that we didn't met, right? But I, but I, 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 I feel I see I hear what you're saying. Oh, sorry, I should interrupt. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I was just gonna say I would have been totally fine if the two of us just said, you know what, screw those guys. Yeah, me we're too. just gonna keep going. Like that's fine. Crispy was literally gonna kill Rick. <laughs> I'm just gonna kill everyone that's injured until it's just me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but one thing, I mean, first of all, I, don't think, I know metagaming has a negative connotation, but I think that it, it's important to know that metagaming means like a player is trying to assert his will through the character's actions. And uh, I think I've definitely done that in the four hour traveler game where I'm like, my character knows Shauner. You know, like I just yep. decide a 4D yep. a relationship that never existed before. And Why? Because, because the same with my player, character. I yeah. want to create a duo now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're yeah. good too. So I think that's kind of meta gamey, but yeah. it's good. It, like I, I think the the line of being being a necessary thing and being like cheese ball comes from when you you use meta gaming to to solve the problem. Like, yeah. right? is that what like, she was talking about though? Like, I'm. Like, I, I don't think we've even gone well, to that. I don't think we've about, addressed anything. She's, she's talking said. about care, uh, players finding. Ways reason for, for the character to work together to stick together yeah. okay well yeah. Yeah. and we got off onto a tangent about my back, back in my pre this phase i would <laughs> always put that in my social contract where characters the players have to figure out why they're together I'm, yeah it's not my job yeah 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 as a gm yeah but, no yeah and hopefully like if you if you get like a if you get the ball rolling in the first adventure as the gm and then the character went through something together Hopefully, yeah. some bound could have been created there. And sometimes, if one character didn't mesh out for some reason, like he can go in his other way, and then like that's not a big deal, right? You can come back with different characters some other time, or leave leave the table. Like it's okay, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we've been we've been bandying about the idea of doing a 4D campaign. Yeah. Do you think that that should be part of the social contract where there's like a party? If I or didn't do you think it should be the premise that handles it. Well, if if I didn't already know the players. Then yeah, yep. I think it would have to be in there. But it, since we've already played enough games together, that I know that I we can trust one another. Then it's I don't know okay. that it has to. Do be you think there. it's right if a player consciously makes an effort to influence their character's actions so that it keeps the group together? You think that's correct gameplay? If if it's if it's that type of character, like like if, if I'm playing a. Yeah. If I'm that character that's like, no, 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 I, I, I just want we all like we should all get along and and yeah. why, why don't we just talk it out, mm. guys? Let's talk it out. If I'm playing that guy, then then yes, it's fine. That's my character. It's like your whole job. But but I also think that it there has to be some limitations if because we've all seen games and we've probably all made this mistake that we're going to make a character that is completely antisocial, hates yeah. everyone, hates everything, never talks to the rest of the party, constantly mm. just being a total just a piece of work always the look yeah. the, the oh i'm gonna be the lone wolf guy and i'm just yeah. mad all the time okay yeah you're just a terrible that's just a terrible character it doesn't fit yeah. if you want to play yeah. if you want to play a character like that play a solo game 
or play just a one-on-one yeah. -on -one game well, with the game that, master. That that's when you tell that player we're meeting the next session at McDonald's, and then you just don't show up. It's, Justin, why is it cake and then McDonald's and what's going did you on, hear man? the rest of the sentence? Yeah. And then you just don't show up. He goes there to the McDonald's to play the game, and the rest of the party's at your house, but sitting trying, around the table. I'm trying, I'm trying to picture a D and D game at McDonald's. It's in the uh, it's in the ball thing, you know, like the big I think I played one of all the syringes. Place. And the urine are like in the big ball, like the where they. I don't the know. Balls. I live in Canada, man. They, they aren't that. We used bad. to have that. We well, used to have that as well. Yeah. Well, well, Crispy's in Vancouver, I guess. So no, I'm in BC. Oh, in don't, BC. Don't yes, put the oh, you know, don't oh, put yeah, the syringe yeah. in my backyard. Thank you. I'm not in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. You live in. Uh... I live in in. Yeah. So I think that's a, what you're saying is a good idea as a solution is have a character whose personality is a peacemaker. That's a great really that's right, Phil. Yeah. That character yep. archetype in your group. In you can almost think of that as it, that's a role in the party that you should yeah. have. There's yeah. some kind of it's like a what is that stupid Justice League? So in Justice League, what's the role of the Flash? He is that he's supposed to keep everyone together, right? Like he's that the yeah, he's the guy. The only reason he's there, because he's not otherwise you just have Superman, right? But I know, thought he was uh, the strongest character of them all. Well, if you look at his actual powers, yes, but that's not the point. The point is, is that he's kind of the heart and soul of the organization. Like if yeah, like, you take like him he's out, friends with everybody. He's friends with anyway. So so they may not get along with one another very well, but they all get along with the Flash, and yeah. and that's like a role that you could have. Just as much as it's important to have somebody that's oh, I can do I, when you get injured, I can heal you. But it's also good to have someone that's like when yeah. we have friction within the group. I'm the guy that creates the levity so that we can all work it out or talk it out instead yeah. of just murdering one another like we really should do. Mm -hmm. um, um, one of my favorite pre the 4D stuff that I used to do, uh, guys that would put out conventional wisdom was the uh, how to be a great GM. And he has like 12 archetypes of what type of player you're going to play as like mm -hmm. the protector. So you're the guy that's always like, right. I'm going to listen to the plan, but I'm going to say ways that we can mitigate risk. Like that's my role. And right, I'm going to, and then you have like the mm -hmm. explorer who's always going to check that last secret door that probably they shouldn't have checked, right. and, you know, and then the peacemaker, like that's another example. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of good uh, wisdom out there for character creation, I think. Mm -hmm. Also, like uh, crispy, if we look at the, the castle and crusade game we did, like, because like I would almost talk about that, like you're, Character personality you can evolve through through time and through the trial and tribulation, right? Mm -hmm. People are not fixed, yeah. like especially when you go to extreme event, that's gonna bring up change in people, right? It should and, if your character is any good. Yes. Yeah, and adventuring are usually extreme events. Like if not, like it's life and death. Doing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're not good. We're not just doing needlepoint together. Like this yeah. shouldn't be. We're just gonna sit around. It's the talking. What we what do we call that, Phil? Just the talking head syndrome. Talk, yeah. Talk, yeah. The, the talky -talky. Come on, like it. it Yep. I like how Shauner puts it. Like, no, if if someone's not almost dying within the first half an hour, then what are you actually doing? Like, yeah. this would be. And you, oh. you, you remember like with uh, with Bernier that was like started very selfish and stuff like that, and there for the money and stuff like that. And there's a lot mm. of point in that game where like I thought like maybe it's time to sunset. Maybe maybe, maybe Bernier will just leave. Maybe it's time to sunset this guy. And then like, yes, then sunset it. Like sunset yeah. him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. But then but then yeah. also like you come with Bar with uh was it a Barris your guy? Barris, yeah, yeah. The dirt yeah, uh, priest guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then like you know slightly this change and with uh with with big bad uh, character as well like Cal mm -hmm. right there's some there's slightly like change happening right oh maybe may, you know maybe being a hero is not that bad right maybe uh, yeah. being uh, loved by people is you know well i like i like the uh, that's why i'm thinking we should start doing more than just one shots because yeah. i like the uh, mm -hmm. i like that uh, evolution that happens between now, characters as we you, keep playing you were saying that that uh, if someone isn't dying in the first half hour <laughs> what the hell are you doing i'm not opposed to playing role playing games where there is no actual violent conflict right like so th that, that that's like a, a, a big difference between myself and most of the people I, so I what conflict is there if there's not violent contact well, conflict then what is well there? that there's emotional political uh well give like a specific example that's you what mean, i'm looking like, for there can still be drama outside of battle. yeah like, what are we talking about right, it what are we like, talking about at stake there need to be some stakes that's what i'm talking the about the stakes well, needs to be pretty high it's not necessarily life or death 
but you yeah, know, but like, like, let's say, say you're you're doing doing like the newsroom, the TV show, the newsroom with. Uh, well, I guess if that's your bag, like yeah, I'm just like, not, if I'm not you're into super that. interested like, in it. If it's obviously like like a lot of people in these circles aren't, but like I wouldn't be opposed to that kind of game. I, I often joke about uh, Jane that uh, Pride and Prejudice game that uh, Black Lodge reviewed. Yeah, a yeah. while back, because like so I'm, I'm an Austinite. Like I'm not. I'm a fan of. Uh, I'm a fan of Regency romances. There you go, Jane Eyre. All <laughs> got your name all over it. <laughs> so like, uh, I I wouldn't be opposed to paying. Well, not that game because it's fucking retarded. Uh, why? It seems to scratch out. the itch, doesn't it, Justin? Like that's no, the... no, no. Go it's watch the, the Black Lodge review on it. It's no. It's no newsroom. It's yeah. no newsroom. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, but no, um, but like still you have other other realms of conflict besides violence that, yes. that sh shouldn't be shied away from just on. But I think that you should be willing to put your life on the line. Like in a Yeah, like, and that's well, not necessarily a violent conflict either. Like it could be yes. an ideological thing. That's fine. It could be a yes. political yeah. thing. But the, the obstacle should be enough that it drives things forward. Whatever yes, that obstacle obviously. is. Otherwise, we Always. just sit around and it's just we're 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 role playing the view. The that mundane. sounds yeah, no, like a we, terrible idea. That that, uh, yeah. that would be a terrible idea. There's always got to be progression, right? Like that, that's the. That, Why do I want to role play the view now? Well, I, I want to be the guest. <laughs> <laughs> Take everyone hostage, and <laughs> here we go. Do you want to be? If you want okay. some uh, high stake, you have to be like a Whoopi's Goldberg chair. <laughs> yeah, Next four D yeah. one shot. No, you got to be like the lone sensible conservative on that show, yeah. and then it's like, <laughs> who who is re who never uses that's any not conservative what I'm talking. Saying. Points yeah, whatsoever. Like what do you think, Zanar? Any thoughts on all the whole thing? Yeah, sorry, sorry Z. Go ahead, buddy. We've been well, talking over you. I just feel uh, incredibly called out. Well, like if nobody's dying, <laughs> what? Why are we even playing? <laughs> Meanwhile, I. Well, we have a, a friend group that plays uh, multiple different games, and we change who GMs depending on the mood. And if you champ before, like if you champ before, you get the day free the next time around so we switch both systems and characters regularly and when IGM I'm running this D&D campaign where we are um, basically it's set up as a free reign you go wherever you want on the sword coast so they can go wherever they want but now that I'm thinking about it the last two sessions there were no model threats it was just we want to go to this town and we visited two different towns now and are on the road. And that's been two sessions now. And I'm really, really thinking like this overworld exploration travel on the highway is not working out for me as yeah. exciting as bringing in new characters, as bringing tension. No, that's when and a dragon just, arrives, right? Like just yeah, out of the yeah. blue. Yeah. And starts and just eats a random, one of the random players. Like by at well, random. Are they tourists? Or your it sounds like threat, tourism, right? yeah. They 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 are adventurers. Uh, yeah. They want to reach like, this town, but because of the map, they're like two big exciting towns on the way there already okay. that I can also explore as part of the setting. Mm. So so I feel like I'm I'm filling out the blanks. Of, these are oh, yeah. all exciting locations that if they, they just and want I to feel locations that are known, right, or that they know about, right? They're not going into the yeah. unknown. They're not going into the. They're not going to where nobody goes. They're not going. They're going the following road and stuff like that. Like then, that's tourism. <laughs> yeah. Well, th th yeah. that's that's the device of yes, but uh, yes and but what, right? Like so, you put them on the road. That they're on the road to whatever the town is but what happens yeah. on the way there right so they get yeah. they get attacked by some trolls they they get drawn over here yeah. for a little bit they get drawn the over there the first thing you went bit. to was combat justin after that well I, I'm, I'm just like it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the easy way out all the time yeah. right like but they're, it they're, can be like a ship they get yeah. the other thing uh, they, they I've can find them. a treasure map yeah all right let's talk z talk Sorry, man. No, it's just yeah. I've I've had them had combat during the boat travel because it's uh, on from one si uh, coast city to the other one. Okay, they they fought some sharks. They were like, I guess this was mildly cool because one of the shark was full of bone shells. 
but mm. but it it did it felt like random encounter TM, like that's mm -hmm. what we did. And the second yeah. one uh, are... on the road, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say um, those are really good times if you know backstory to just throw in a character. Yeah, from from your, yeah, your NPC. When you're in, yep. in, they live like, in that town and they're in NPC, trouble but... with the law or something. Yeah, yeah. Or they're, they're in they're trouble. Be or they're they're interacting with something. some custom of the culture of that town that you want to emphasize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's one thing I don't yeah. like about random encounter because like it, the stakes are not like you have the stake that oh I'm getting attacked now I need to defend myself from survival but you're not fighting for something other than survival yes. you're fighting for a cause you're not fighting to progress something you're not fighting for an ideal or stuff like that right yes what it's, what's the point of combat yeah you just like Do I actually learn totally something agree. from the region I is I it helping combat. a faction yeah mm. yeah we should do one of these where you try to convince me that combat isn't just a huge waste of time. <laughs> Unless you agree, I don't think it is. Like, uh, like the you know that's the thing. Like, like we say, like it's not about like it's not always about violence, but it's like drama require conflict, and conflict often devolve into violence, especially in the type of genre that we that we evolve. It doesn't have to, but there needs mm -hmm. to be conflict. And uh, Nicholas was was saying like uh, about Dune, like oh uh, in Dune there's a lot of like uh fuck what was that comment now? Sure, like a. Uh, you say like that in Dune, there's a lot of uh, intense conflict without weapon being drawn, and that's true. Yeah. But in Dune, even if no weapon is being drawn, the threat of it is there. The threat of uh, there's still something about life and death there as yeah, well, oh, right? Yeah. Because like if if Jessica finds out that UA is a traitor, well, UA is gonna be he's gonna be die, he's gonna be killed, right? Yeah. Let's welcome somebody else. Azimut. How are you doing, he man? Doing well, doing well. Doing well. Oh, you got a good sound, man. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, all from that Hello, little, like, uh, Yeah. So what's up? You wanted to say something about that? Yeah, I was going to give some advice, if I may. The uh, Part of the problem with uh, this free-flow narrative of running a game can create an emergent story and give a lot of agency to the players, but it sounds like might be dealing with some aimlessness mm -hmm. and one of the yeah. and one of the ways i resolve that in my home game is that i break things down into scenes and i create a selection of scenes where they can choose to engage this or do that and that way there's like an agreed upon objective even if they're going to split the party if that makes any sense and because of that you, you like don't have this well, I mean, the, in contrast, most games I've ever played, and I'm guilty of this too, I'm sure we all are, you start a campaign or you start a session with, okay, you wake up in your bunk or you wake up in your, <laughs> the end. What do you do? Yeah. Right? And then you're like, oh, I'm like, go get breakfast. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just kind of just kind of slogs. Even if you I just – go brush my teeth. Yeah, it, exactly. And it's, it's a trap that – and then some writers even use that that method where you just start writing a character and you follow them until they do something interesting. And then you go back and edit that part of the book. Just delete the previous parts. Exactly. Yeah, that's smart. But but you can't do that in free form with a table. So what I'd yes. actually do is like, for instance, I was running a uh, campaign where I combined the worlds of DC and Marvel. So all the superheroes just like, mixed up together and there's all this drama. And so it was literally the, the scenes would be hinted towards like the penguin or the streets of Gotham or, you know, whatever. And it's where you would engage that group of characters. And that way what happens there is you can just jump right to the action. You can jump right to whether it's dealing with a mutant registration act. So you got the political or if you're dealing with, you know, an actual street fight or whatever you just jump right into it and because you wind up with this uh, we call it unified or agreed upon objective even if it's not just pure violence you can at least have an agreed upon subjective challenge or threat if that mm -hmm. makes any sense yeah i have a question for you then it, this this uh this unified objective that you're talking about in a scene who decides what that objective is? Is that you? 
No, the it, it's actually a little more free forming. It's the the players have a choice of scenes laid out. But the, like each scene has an objective that's yeah. embedded in it, and who set that objective? Uh the objective is more of uh, it's 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 a little gray. It depends on the scene that you're choosing. I mean, if you choose a scene where it's robbed the bank, the objective is clear. If it, the uh, if the scene is the you know to patrol the streets of Gotham, the object is clear. I have a hard time like uh like like because it's almost sound like it's a menu like like a, a mission menu like if you're in a video game right like the, the way you say yeah. it like just like but your character are somewhere they're doing something right maybe together maybe separate right yeah yeah and I like the way I like to do it I like to bring like there's there's gonna be stuff happening in the world right where the characters are right. Mm -hmm. Or are you going to bring them for some reason to, and then like where does stuff happen? Not you don't bring them yourself, but like you, you, you when they go somewhere, then something happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you you want to have some conflict in the world, in your world. Uh, like I always say, like try to have like a conflict that is like a little bit out of reach of the character. They're going to mm -hmm. get there sometime. Yeah. It's going to be in the background and stuff like that. But you want to have something that they can look forward to, something. But even if it's even if they cannot solve this conflict right away, it's still gonna impact them. You know, it's like the old like rebellion and the empire. They're not gonna defeat the empire, but how it's gonna impact them, right? This conflict. Correct. I, I do want to know, like, how do you do this? I, I run into this problem where, yes, I will bring in conflict, and it feels like there was no setup, and and I just feel like. Oh, the players run into the conflict because they are the main characters and they need something to do. Like, how do I weave this in? Like, oh yeah, this is a normal world. Two months can happen and nobody died. Good job. Yeah. Like, how, mm -hmm. how can I weave this into the game that it feels natural that now it's time for conflict to arise? Well, well, like, okay, yeah. you're at the tavern. Oh. It's, just because <laughs> it, it's, the, it's the trope, right? It, it doesn't yeah. have yes. to actually be a fucking tavern. I'm just using the trope. You're at the tavern and you overhear someone talking about the cult of whatever doing something. That's a promise. You can choose to investigate that. You can choose not to. That shit's still happening. Whether whether you, you yep. you've overheard like some some snake god cult is summoning giant snake creature to eat the moon. Uh, and if you you investigate and stop that, okay, the moon doesn't get eaten. You don't stop that. Well. Two months have gone by and there's no fucking moon left. <laughs> so, do you have your player characters need to have goals? Like yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Long term goals. Yeah, and that's what I, I was trying not to say because that's what yeah. I want to talk oh. about later later on after oh, we, yeah. we, don't, we go through this deal. The, the yes. question I want to know is in a campaign, but, but how do you th those uh, goals... marry everyone else's short term, long term goals? I feel like you kind of have to s tie them in together a little bit, right? You can, yeah. or like, yeah, you can come in and out, right? But, but that that's a that's a different like that's a character arc, not a, a plot arc, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, yeah. the arc I was yes. talking about. The is idea like a is that it should be they they together. should interweave and and touch on each yeah. other, but, but they then, are then, okay. Separate. So Justin, Justin, you just said that there's a plot arc. So who who creates that then? That's like the world is. Like you are the player, you're choosing to interact with the world. The game master puts things in the world for you to interact with. You you interact with okay. them. M maybe there are big things, maybe there are small things, right? Like, like uh, the this guy was saying, uh, the the bank the bank gets robbed. Yeah. Well, that's a small thing that happens in the world. Whether you interact with it or not, that still happens, right? Like so, yeah. maybe that has a so is small that the plot, impact. Then? What do you mean by plot? It, you said in, the plot. So in, in a good to story, there are many that. plots going on at the same time. In the story, so in, again, in all we're back stories, to this. in all stories, there, there is. There's so is this a story that happening. we're doing? Yes. Oh, there, when when you when you create your world, it is a story we like that we that. You know, have you we don't know, know it's not pre-written, right? We don't, we don't know where it's going. But like, I mean, let, let's say the, the, story the game we had Monday. Yeah, but like, there's always like a, like in the Monday game, like oh, you're being dropped on this planet, you're prisoner and stuff like that. That's the initiating event we have. Like then that's yeah. 
some kind of conflict that is already like some kind of plot that is like you know like oh okay we're dropping this planet what will happen how will we survive and you know there's all those uh, those implications this like like uh, Justin said those promises of thing that that might happen right and if you do like a longer campaign like you can be like well there's a war brewing that's gonna that's gonna erupt at some point or there's like an occupation in that town uh, and it doesn't mean like well there's this conflict in the world that you can't or can't choose to interact with but at some point it might interact with you as well you might just be in yeah. this cafe or whatever and then there's some of those bad guy that come up and start like uh, causing trouble and roughing you up right and now like you, you're starting the developing feeling toward them right and yeah. goals of a character can change over time as well mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting yeah. when when they interact with the world right at some point maybe, maybe yeah. the guy was just in for the money but now he got like he got involved with this guy and now they want him dead so now you want to avenge you know like all kind of you, you you're free to go like uh where, where you when you want to go you're in control of this character right mm. Mm -hmm. and, and if it's, yeah. you, you should never divorce role playing from storytelling because it is yeah. storytelling like you you got to think of it not as you're the reader of a book you're the writer of the book yeah the entire party the 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 game master the players they're all the writer of the story that will take time. Books do not mm -hmm. magically appear as fully formed stories on the shelf. Someone spent months to years making them, just like the party will spend time making the the finished game. Uh, Azimuth, you wanted to say? Yeah. Oh, no, I was just uh, going to agree, but I think part of the reason why, um, and the gentleman right above me, what's your name? Z. It's on the line. Z. <laughs> One of yep. the things that might help, that I've uh, found, because a full disclosure, and I'm not going to plug it or anything like that, but I'm writing my own RPG, and that's the reason why I'm reaching you out and trying it. to create connection. I'm not ready to publish it yet anyway. Oh. Uh, but one of the problems that I found that helped me, that helps a lot of the new players, is that part of the problem is, is that the narrative, the overall narrative or the size of the narrative is too subjective, right? Um, you need a heuristic a neurological shortcut to kind of get a foothold and I, and you just break it down into three, three, uh, three chunks. You got the big plot. That's the world. That's what's affected. That's affecting the entire surrounding of the characters, the fate of the characters as a whole. You got the individual plot. That's the, the, uh, you know, the divergent stories of each individual character. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then if you want to get fans, see you kind of start poking holes in both of those through the internal plot of each character that whole like you literally turn to the player and go what is your character thinking right and then they'll just yeah. naturally start to explore because yeah. uh, internal dialogue you don't find that in movies uh you only find that in books i mean i guess you find it in like the original uh what dune, dune film yeah <laughs> the best right? movie ever made <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and that was and that's uh but normally taboo, but he pulled it off, in my yeah. opinion. Or most people would agree. So you see my point. If you start breaking it down to big plot, individual plot or little plot, and yeah. an internal plot, they will just – it gives you a direction to kind of put pressure. You put pressure on no, the individual yeah, like plot. I like, I like, I like, I like what, you, what you're saying there. You know, like there's this, the conflict in the world that is outside the character. There's a conflict of what the characters, the character want, but it's also like the internal conflict of like, you know, yeah. maybe this thing changing about, like, you know, we all like a uh, always like say this sentence of what a Faulkner was saying. Like, the only thing worth writing about is the human art in conflict with itself, right? I think yeah. you need that in your character as well. Crispy, you want to? Yeah. Huh? No, sorry. No, you don't have anything to add. Should we play yeah. a bit? Yeah, I'm, not a little bit. I'm not sensitive. If you got something to pick it, pick me apart, please How do. Dare because you I am as dare well you come. as you come in here, plug in your game. It's not even ready. <laughs> I didn't say the name. Sure. I haven't even, even started my channel yet. I'm that he much. Even he's got he's already yet. talking about his GoFundMe for God's sake. No, please talk about McDonald's or you're out of here right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're loose, <Right>. Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it. Well, in all transparency, some it's people okay. find the idea of uh, of maintaining the uh, the continuous gameplay as fragmented scenes instead of a continuous flow a little a little off putting. 
and all transparency. You know, I kind of like the idea. Yeah. I think uh, keeping the scenes is a good way to keep tempo up. Yeah. 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 You it. edit out the small stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm for it. You return to a character Time a couple skips. of weeks later instead of living through all the boring crap. Let me press play. Want... Let's see what Ginny D has yes, to please. offer. She's going to tell you uh, just yeah, see, This is say. the problem. We've been talking, and the solution for next level role play is right there in glorious turquoise saying, in front of us. Yeah, exactly. No, but and actually, like her it, eyebrows. There's real commitment there, people. Real. The commitment. advice, it's the advice she's gonna smile. give is not complete trash, and we haven't I'm quite excited. touched on it, right? So let's uh, let's listen. Great video, folks. See you next week. No, I'm joking. I actually have a lot yeah. more to say. I want to show you why this works, how this works, why it's good for both players and GMs, and I want to share some examples of this trick in action because this is more than just saying you've met before or slapping a label on a pair of characters. But first, while some of you are still in the middle of typing your well actuallys into the comments, let's address the fact that lots of tabletop role-playing games already have a mechanic like this built into the system. Fatecore's Phase Trio systematizes the act of incorporating the other players into your backstory, making sure that you've crossed paths with two other characters before the game starts. Critical Role's new game, Daggerheart, includes specific questions yeah. to connect you to other player characters, <laughs> like, what do I do that annoys you? I or, that what out. made you realize that we were going to be such good friends. In Traveler, incorporating a connection with another character into your Traveler, backstory Rosh actually Hunter. benefits your stats. Get that gives name you out of your mouth. Skill. And that's just a few of the many games <laughs> wow. that you this. In tabletop design spaces, Boy, it's Shana? often said that if something is important to a no, game, it'll be represented in the mechanics. The elephant in the room here, I think, is D&D, which has its roots in wargaming. Roots that are what? still very much present in where it chooses to focus its mechanics. But as D&D evolves and attracts a different type of audience with different goals, the mechanics don't necessarily change to match. I mean, D&D has bonds, part of a section of the character sheet that I suspect a huge number of players don't really use. But in my experience, these bonds are mostly formed with NPCs or organizations rather than with your fellow players. Otherwise... So you get what she's saying there. Basically, yep. if you want your yep. party, like uh, have connection between your, with your, your party member, right? Yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, make it make it a role as part of the role playing game that is set in stone, basically. Yeah. Well, this you can, is yeah, you can do it in character creation, right? Like oh, and I like I like when uh, when it's like and she's all like make a mesh, you know, like you don't you're not necessarily connected with everybody. You don't have to be a team for a long time, but maybe like, and that's something with the uh, with the life path in Traveler and, or another game that works well. Like oh. Oh, you went to Naval Academy? I went there as well. Maybe we get we maybe got to know each other, or like or at some point in the fire game, like crispy just uh and because of the, the style we play, like crispy just say, like, I don't know if you remember me, sir. I say, Yeah, I certainly do remember you, right? Now, like we didn't discuss it before that we know each other, and like Phil was saying with Shunner's character, but then all of a sudden we have like this uh this uh we have this uh connection there. But you can do that from the start as well from Gactar creation. Uh if you want, right? And I think that's um, good. Uh... I think uh, yeah. something I did in one one shot uh, was I just I had like a I made my own table of like relationships, so everyone kind of rolled between each one, yeah. and it kind of sets up. It's like this person owes you money. This person like you, yeah. you have a secret love interest with this person. And it kind of uh, sets up a cool way to get everyone sticking yeah. together. So which one of us is going to have to explain to this young lady that you can do this without it being codified in the rules? Yes. And good but players that have as been well. doing yeah. this. Yeah. Like, she just said that, though. Yeah, she just She's said like, that in, like, oh, really not in the room, D &D, D &D, but you can still do that, right? Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. because... I, 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 go ahead. You, you got to take into account that 99% of people that play Dungeons & Dragons buy the books, they spend all the money... They look at the cover art, and then they make up their own fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, when I was sixteen, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, this being yeah. in the rule, like, <laughs> she she's like saying you should probably do something like that. Yeah. Like, that's why white knighting for Ginny D against me. Well, <laughs> well, just, is this talking for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want Team Ginny. I, I will it, white knight for her right after she lets me shave her fucking bald, and that includes no. those damn eyebrows because that fucking thing is hurting my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, Wait, are those eyebrows blue? Just yeah, they are. She, yeah, that's what I mean, there's some real commitment there. Z, you next time, you think it's a lot of away? fucking Kool Aid? 
Okay. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. She's she's on a roll, guys. She's on a roll. Yeah, I agree. And I can't right, wait to yeah. the next He doesn't part. really have relationship mechanics. But I'm going to let you in on a secret. You can just add one in. Oh, there the you go. Thank you, police thank aren't you, going to break down your door and say, I'm sorry, ma'am, that's a fate core mechanic. You can't use that in D&D. We're going to need to take you down to the station. If roleplay is important in your games, oh, no. and for whatever reason you'd rather be playing D&D than playing fate core or traveler or what. I, I like what you said. Like, well, roleplay is important in your game, and for whatever reason you prefer playing D&D. <laughs> yeah, so, and how many traveler games do you think she's ran? Or been uh, in? I don't, I, I don't, I don't think know. she's... I think she's D and D gal, isn't she? She, she pushed that camera in a foot feet. when she needed to pull probably a it out dagger. Of it's, it's just ironic. Yeah, dagger it's like... <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna play whatever is like uh, approved by the like the so, so committee of well thinking people, right? She's really talking up fate a lot. Yeah, yeah. She, likes. she probably plays it. <laughs> yeah, it's probably yeah. her game of choice. Whatever, you can choose to build it into your DD. No there is absolutely no reason not to steal a mechanic from another game that you think would serve your table. The way I do it it's is pretty simple. Like... I just require that every player character have an existing connection to at least two other characters. This naturally results in a network of connections that crisscrosses the entire group. Now, players can work this out on their own, one on one, or we can develop those connections together during session zero. I find that this tactic is most effective when it's done alongside the process of character creation rather than afterwards. All right. If people come up with their entire backstory. The rest is, uh, she's just going to explain that. We don't need to listen to her more. We're going to just, that's, uh, that's, that, that's basically her advice yep, for that yep. video. I'm I guess he, here's my question to this Is this always a positive? To have uh, connections between the player characters. Oh. Not always. Like, depending on the setting, yeah, depending on, on the team and the campaign, stuff like that. Like, when you oh, say positive Z, what do you mean positive? Like, I mean, mean, like, uh, as as an, uh, like, will this always result in a better time at a gaming table? Like, oh, is, I see. Will okay. we get more interesting interactions? Will we have more fun? Stuff like that. Um. Yeah, I, th I think two for everyone is. It's a, maybe it's a bit much here. Yeah. Maybe not necessary. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I can see, I, I'm already playing a wizard, drow, male, like ex slave, who was trained to be wizard for a matriarch from the underground. Nobody else is from the underdark. They have no connections to me. I fled my country to survive because she wants my head. Yeah, but then yeah. you pick Completely. something weird, which that's a bad, yes. that's that's a negative. Yeah. <laughs> Special <laughs> snowflake character, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you just say yes. you you stole from one of the other characters when you're yeah. trying like, to make. Like, it. What what you what you just did there, like, and I know, like, we're just like talking like that on top of our head, right? It's, like, I don't I don't think it like for cash like, yeah. as a uh, indicative, like, oh, you role play, but it's like <laughs> you're telling me like what your character is, not who your yes. character is, and that's something I'm going to talk a lot about, right? And that's what that's, yeah. Basically, the topic of tonight: how to role play a mm -hmm. character and the character sheet, right? And I thought like this advice from Ginny D like was all right, right? Just like it's not like groundbreaking or like a no, it's milk toast. Yeah, it's milk toast, but you know, conventional it's, wisdom as we discussed. It's well, yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 like better than what we often see in this. It's actually like useful advice. It's not trash, right? If you have connection, because that's what you think. If you want to have your character, if you want to role play a character, your character need to be. A person, not just yes. a bunch of stuff, not just a race, a class, and a background, right? You need to be a person. A person got mm -hmm. connection. A person got goals. A person got ambition. A person got qualities and flaws and virtue and vices and stuff like that, right? Habits, attitude, mm -hmm. trauma, biases. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I when I tell my players when they're making a character. I mean, like you're not going to play the numbers on the character. You're going to play the personality. Now, the personality could be informed by the numbers on the character, on the yeah. character sheet. But you're not playing the character sheet. You're playing yeah. what the character sheet it, represents. If you're, which is if your personality. Yeah. If your character has like a really high strength stat, they've probably spent a lot of time working out or something. You know, that's a right. personality quirk. People do. That's how that that. Well, I'm I'm just saying, like, because you said the numbers might. Uh, they should influence, of course, because yeah, that influence that, your character. So I'm I'm giving an example of that for the audience. So uh, my what I was asked that. recently so, by some randos to run a game for them, and the one kid that wanted me, and obviously I'm going to say no, but the the because uh, <laughs> we're 
Busy, busy. <laughs> busy. But at any rate, the main thing he wanted to do is he wanted to play his strength 18 fighter. And that's all he wanted to talk about is I got a str I rolled up a strength 18 fighter. I'm going to totally own everything. And just going to, and I said, I wouldn't, first of all, the only character that you're ever going to play in a game that I'm running is a character that we've all like that you create in front of me. Not this. Oh, by the way, I just rolled six stats and all of them are 17 or higher. And I'm, da -da 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 -da. I'm like, this is not, he goes, Oh yeah. Well, you, you just don't understand. And he was going to lecture me about how important it was that he could play his 18 strength character. That's not even a character. That doesn't even sound like a, a believable human being. It's just all it is is that I just want to play this plus three on my strength. That's all you're just playing the plus three. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I tell my players, I yes, you're gonna have on your your character sheet your attributes and your skills and in in traveler, you're gonna have connections and you're gonna have life events. But what you're really what I want to see is I want to see how how are you going to embody that the personality of that like what, what are you going to how are you going to role play that yeah. 18 strength or that four intelligence i want to see the role play of the four intelligence that's well, it's what, funny because the game i'm in right now i am playing a uh, stat 18 fighter <laughs> no you're funny, not you're but, playing a person but you're playing Justin. a person not it's not like that's what i, I never point is, i i never used you didn't the, get I, my I, point I, my point I, was i get it, i get the point i i, I don't I don't focus on it. I, I do exactly what you say. It's just, it's funny that you use that number. And that's the stuff I have. Yeah, but yeah, because you guys are still gonna have stats and stuff like that. You know, that's part yeah. of the game. That's that's, and we're gonna use those. And it right? is AD and D. It's one of the main reasons I like uh, yeah. the World of Darkness system is because you get to you make concept before stats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. yeah. A lot of games start with that. Like Savage Worlds, to its credit, yeah. starts with that. Mm -hmm. Savage Worlds starts with you start with an idea. Right, an idea of your character. What is your character? I'm a retired boxer. Okay, yeah. retired boxer that's down on my luck. Whatever it is, so you already you're already thinking of of ed, of uh, what you're good at. What your repair cops are. machines now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If a, an individual came to you, crispy, and you got one where it says, "I want to play my fighter with 18 strength plus three. Yeah, no. Yeah. And another one says, I want to embody Conan the Barbarian. Okay, well, mm. number two gets in. Yeah. Number one has got some work to do. And on the paper on the character sheet, they're identical. Yeah. Yeah. One's a but barbarian one, plus three, one's a barbarian right. plus three. But the other one is bringing uh you know a heart to it, especially if you read yeah. the books and not just watch sure. Arnold Schwarzenegger's version of it, which is still, you know, still sure, fucking awesome. Sure. At least the first one, anyway. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, start with concept yeah. first. Yeah. Or, yeah. or I'm playing more of a young Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Adventuring with children? Yeah. No, no, no. He's young, pleased. young. I haven't young. hit the three touchdowns in one game yet. Okay, so he's not selling shoes yet. <laughs> no. no. Okay, give it time. <laughs> and that's where Phil and I. Shut I I'm, off I'm our heading cameras. that way though. <laughs> oh, Phil, Phil and I shut off our like cameras that. immediately. Uh, yeah, so um, it's. I think it's more important Sorry. to think about the think about the character in terms of the personality. Like, well, that's what you're going to be playing. Obviously, mm -hmm. yes. And not only your character should have personality, but this personality should show off. Even like outside of those like little dialogue scene, right? Where in your action, and of course, it like should. That. The way you get the go, the way you're gonna approach. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about like. You shouldn't like, oh, no, there's an action scene, there's combat and stuff like that. Now I'm just like focusing on my character sheet and what I got to use to win combat, right? Mm -hmm. You want to do that because your character wants to survive and stuff like that, but you also want to pass that through the filter of who your character is. Is your character yep. going to run away? Is your character going to mm -hmm. try to help his fellow man? Is your character going to try, you know, all those kind of things. That is important when you want to play a character. This is what you have to do as well, right? Yeah, and it the shouldn't role be in combat is not only like about description and saying, like, oh, I use 12, like, twirl my sword and stab him in the ass, right? It's just like those are fine and then, then can also like contribute to. Who your character is, is your character very flashy or is your character very or stuff like that. But this is the point of it. This description should serve that as well, it should serve as like telling me something about your character and the way you act in combat, the role playing combat is that as well. Yeah, amen, hallelujah. There shouldn't mm -hmm. be a bright line, bold face, whatever, between 
how you play out of combat and how you play in combat. Yeah. It's how you play yeah. the character. Yeah. Now, the character will have different things that happen to them. Uh, and some of those things will involve violence and some won't. But they're, they're still, they should, the personality that you're embodying that as you get into that, that character should be harmonious throughout the whole thing. I don't, I, it's always just bothered me. Like, well, I play this way, but then when we're in combat, I play something all of a sudden I'm, I'm a, yeah. I can't tie my shoes. I'm a Velcro kid. I can't, but all of a sudden we're in combat Velcro. and now I, I'm the master <laughs> tactician. Move aside, move yeah. aside. I'm going to direct all, all the combat here. You know, I, I, I sign my name with a big X in crayon, but when it comes to this, I'm suddenly this genius. No. Fuck you, I wear loafers. Oh. I don't even have Velcro. I'm They're sorry. Pull off. I want I that t-shirt, Velcro kid. I, I, uh, want, I want that t-shirt. I'll play Coward next. That seems fun. Uh, I think yeah, that's going to be an archetype like in my game now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one as an NPC. Yeah, the guy that has to walk around with the, you know, his... His name, he has a little name tag so that if people when he gets lost, cold. people can say, Oh, you know, right? Yeah. Phone number. <laughs> oh. 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 And then he does a triple flip up onto the street light with his <laughs> katana drawn. <laughs> like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's you guys, know, one of the one of the red flags to spot a player that's falling into that um, line of thinking is when you turn to them, ask them what they're gonna do, and their response is to look at their character sheet. Okay. Here. I, so that's first someone thing, who's stuck in the uh, the mechanics yeah. and the unfortunate list of I could do this and I could do this and I could do this. And instead of thinking, yeah. what would my character do? What is the agency and the autonomy in the narrative? Uh, Azimuth, I'm going to blow your mind. It's going to be such a revolutionary thing. It's going to grow all your hair back on your head. <laughs> so, I shave it. It's you, just a little hawk. Okay, you, the, you do not have to ask your players, okay. what do you do? Yeah. If yeah. you're asking your players what do you do, what you need to do is you need to beat your players, not the characters, beat the players with something heavy and, you know, it doesn't have to be sharp. But you have to get them so that they are telling you without yeah. being prompted what they are doing. The The mm -hmm. essence of what our experiments here, Max, Phil, and I, is to try to show that a game master does not have to be the one that's drawing out the character, the players to do things that the players themselves be, uh, can be proactive. We've all done what you've said. We've all done it. We've all done it. We've all okay. said, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Come on. What are you thinking? What do you? Okay. We've all done that, but you do not have to do that. You just have to get your character, your players to understand that they are responsible for pursuing their character's goals at all times. And yeah, that yeah. when there's a, whenever there's a lull, you just look at them until they feel so shamed by your judging <laughs> gaze, gaze that they, they forward what they're going to do without you saying, hey, you, on your phone, yeah, what are you doing right now? Right? Well, what just he should be doing is packing up his stuff and getting out of my house. Because yep. there's no way that you're going to be in my game if you're not there to play. And it's not, it's not fair to you as the guy running the game to have mm -hmm. to continually draw them out. Okay, uh, I, I'm trying to, I've got a great scene here. It's a bank robbery with superheroes. Sounds tight. Love it. But mm -hmm. now I've got to ask you, what do you do when I have the special, you know, her Brinks, whatever armored car guy show up and they're also got superpowers and, and you're there now. And then what do you do? You shouldn't have to do that, man. Especially if they end up, if, they, blow say your that, mind. if oh. they say after that, well, what's going on? What do I see? What is this? What, what do I what's see? What's happening around me? Mm -hmm. Don't no, ask me any questions. This is the rules we have. You'd never yeah. ask a question out of character to the game master ever, 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 ever. And not, then, I, not even rules clarification. Hell no, no. Because uh, you're just like gonna, one you, at the table. It's too late for that. <laughs> yeah, it's too late. And if they make a mistake, then we'll fix it afterwards, right? Yeah. Like, or we'll just. Talk that doesn't really matter. Like, well, what, okay. what if happens if what, what if I try to break the plumbing and, and flood it, and then I'm going to use some electricity? Well, we have to look up the electricity rules and the, the flooding rules and the fluid dynamics. No, oh, no, no, no. You're, you're, you're describing do that. you're describing every Shadowrun game I've ever game mastered or played no, in. It's Literally just, all of them. It's just well. I break the plumbing. Possible. <laughs> Roll. So anyway, 
I know that sounds radical, Esmond. I know, I know it does. No, it's not it's radical. Gonna, it's just gonna that blow your mind, man. No, we're on the same page. It's just that you're addressing uh, amateur problems of like getting caught up in yeah. you know a list of what your character can do versus just being in the narrative. Yeah. So I you're assume in that the world. context yeah. of the conversation is new players and new players, especially if they've never gamed before. They're good at they, it. They do need a prompt. They don't. This is the. This is. I've, yeah. I've well, experimented with this. Well, it could be just looking them in the eye, like you said. That's a. That's a. Yeah. So, sometimes, sometimes. Oh yeah. They get I'm under the why is Chris be like staring that. at me? But yeah. the, the what I'm what I mean by new players are good at this is because they don't have any of the bad habits. So yeah. if you just tell a new person, yes. you just say you say it in the Masmith. Okay, we're going to do something real crazy here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a fictional world together. We're going to pretend mm -hmm. this world is real, and in this world. All of your favorite Marvel superheroes and DC yeah. superheroes exist, coexist, as do all of their enemies. Yeah. Do you have? Oh, and everyone's like, yeah. So I've seen those movies. Yeah. Okay. So all of those movies apply. Yes, all of those movies apply. Anything that you can think of in that particular fiction, yeah. this is yeah. this is what it's there. And then you tell them, in this while we play for the next couple hours, you're going to pretend that you're really in that world. You, your character is really in that world. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to ask me if something exists in the world because you and I are, are operating under the same fiction. And then you just mm -hmm. teach them the dice mechanic or whatever it is. Yeah, you got to give them, they have to know the rules, obviously. But in yeah. terms of experienced role play, the noobs get this right. The mm, experienced yes. guys complicate it. Those of us that have been in it for a long time, we make it hard. We make it hard. We take simple stuff, we make it hard. Mm -hmm. And that's why yeah, that's why I'm always like talking about like uh, keeping your world like uh, simple and flexible, right? You might have ideas and stuff like that, but don't be married to them because you want to be able to let your player make assumption because you yeah. don't want to stop your player and correct them. Like, well, actually in this world, like this wouldn't work or it would work in this way because then you're training them to ask you questions. And we don't want to do that. Like just, we often say like what you do in your turn, like, you, and you can teach that to a new player very easily, right? You say like, Tell me where your character is. Tell me what your character does. Tell me what your character says, right? Mm -hmm. Preferably in that order, right? And that's it. And if you want to know something about the world, like you want to know if, like I'll use the example, you want to know if the door is locked. Don't ask the GMs the door lock. What do you do in the world, in real life, if you want to know if a door is locked? You, you walk up to it. You try the handle. That? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting and, and, insight that, the the person who's never game before doesn't make these mistakes, and the person who's experienced doesn't make mistakes. But the ones that have a little bit of experience or just do oh, too much war gaming yeah. falls into that. That's a, actually an interesting. Well, insight, well I'm, which I'm, I've it's seen. not quite what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is All most right. of us have learned a style of play that is simply asking questions until we ask the right question oh, to no, get I the don't. right answer. And most of us do it this way, or we've we've learned yeah. it this way through many years yeah. of just being told, well, actually, and then whatever, right? Yeah. Or I, can I see this? Or is there this? Or can or do I know this? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from I, I, all of that. I yelled at a guy. Right? I yelled at a guy in the game I was in on uh, Sunday, last Sunday, um, for doing that. It was like why are you asking? Just do it. Just fucking do who, it. Yeah. Well, Justin, like just, who is he asking? Do it. Are you just asking the narrator in the sky? Is that yeah, like, yeah, that, like that? Like, is... Well, it was, it was that a character talk. It's a looser game than you would play. We we're playing. So was, there's a little more of that going on. I, I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, but it's like, why are you asking? Like I, I, I wasn't the DM. I, I started fucking yelling at the guy anyway. Why are you asking? Just do it. Roll. You want to just fucking do it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and Shadow was like, yeah, thank you, man. But uh, it was like, but you have one of those players that are ingrained into the the 5e mentality, right? Like, Well, I don't think it's limited to 5e. No, I think well, it's to 5e. It's it, that's, the, that's the big box in the fucking store. So I've watched know. a lot of OSR games and those guys do it yeah. pretty much the well, same. I can, I can certainly. A 5e player, so. Words yeah. I, I can certainly attest uh, it's not limited to like new players or old players. Like, uh, mm -hmm. as somebody sure. like, <clears throat> I've I've been playing for a while, and at one point I was just like, you know what, I will uh, run a game D and D for my parents. 
and like all uh, the whole family, like eight, uh, seven players, and my mom and dad picked it up immediately. And after mm -hmm. the game was over, I asked my mom, like, how did you find like playing Dungeons and Dragons? Because rolling dice, character sheets is completely new to her. And she, she told me, you know, this feels like when I was uh, trying to get you kids to sleep, I just invent a story and tell it to you yeah. until you passed out. Yeah. That's literally it. She got it immediately. Great. Okay, yeah. give her somebody oh, give uh, Z our Discord so that he can invite his her, his mom over. We don't want Sounds like she'd be a good player. <laughs> I'm not trying to make some dick. cheesy mom joke, right? I, I just think <laughs> it's a big tent. We're trying to grow it. Need Here more we go. <laughs> yeah, the, the, what uh, Nicholas said, like they are like a back before forty stuff. Whenever a player can ask, can I? I respond. I don't know. Can you? Right, and that's like. That's often something I talk about when you say like a critical role. And then they go, may I? Like, no, oh, that mother, may I? <laughs> it doesn't, you, you don't need to, role, you don't like, need to ask that, Like, oh, can I do that? And like Matt Mercer is known for his, his reply. Well, you can certainly try. After yeah. seeing that for years and years and years, you should like, know that's what he's going to tell you. So stop asking, can I? Just fucking say, I'm trying to do I, that. I, I want to do that. Or I do that, right? Just like, don't, just fucking do it. Why you would add I, this extra step? That just, I like, honestly think that that's passively, uh, pa passive aggressively telling the audience to stop asking. Like they, <laughs> they work that in because that is there is a production. They don't get it. That show. They don't. Well, they don't, they don't eyes, get it. Like most people do not get subcontext on anything. Yeah. So. I feel like a lot of games happen to be like, I, I always want my players to take risks, but they're all risk averse because they don't want to die. And yeah. I feel like if I step in the wrong room on the wrong tile, I'll explode in flames. Yeah. So I have to ask for everything first before I Do you have a lot of action. issues with doors? doors <laughs> yes. Stand at doors a lot. That's, that's what OPG is about, it's opening doors. It's all about the doors. It's all about the doors. You open the doors to get to the next door. I've opened a lot of doors in my life and a lot of ones that I shouldn't have opened. And I'm telling you, not one of them had electricity running through the fucking door handle. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, uh, I think players and game masters alike should understand that the reward for the game is the experience of playing. Yep. It, it's, the, it's the experience itself that's the reward. It's not the pile of gold at, yep. it, with the dragon. That shouldn't be the reward because think about it this way, Z. If your your players yeah. are are adventuring through the Sword Coast, they're heading towards a certain place. Before yes. they get to that certain place, rocks fall and they all die. Was <laughs> mm -hmm. was all of the previous adventure to get to that place? Was it just wasted? Well, they're like, well, this was just a wa colossal waste of my time. Thanks a lot, Z. You know, here I am playing this game, and now we didn't get to the thing, and I didn't get to it. Or was the experience of traveling to that place, the experience of playing, was its own reward? Hmm. It shouldn't be. It's only the game is the reward is just the pile of the pot of gold at the end, or the I'm level five now. That shouldn't be the reward. The reward is no. I embodied this character as, and for a, a brief moment of time, this felt real. It, I I could smell the smells. I could imagine. I could picture the sights, and that character. I felt like I knew that character. I knew what that character would do, which is not what I would do as a person, but what that character would do. I knew it, and mm -hmm. and that's the reward. It's not. It's not. I get to level up now. Oh, good. I get to roll more hit points. Oh, goody. <laughs> that's not. That's not it. It shouldn't be. Oh, uh, do I have yeah, to? So Go ahead, reference uh, Alan Watts. It's a musical thing. You don't listen yeah. to music to hear the final note. Yeah, no, yeah. it's you, the exactly, journey through yeah. all the notes. I love they, that. Thank you for sharing that. The drop. Yeah. I, I've never even heard that before. That's that's that very good. That's it's perfect. Alan Watts. I'm I'm plagiarizing Alan Watts, a writer from the 70s. Yeah, I know Alan Watts. But I've never heard that one specifically. <laughs> well, you accredited him, so it's not plagiarism. Yeah. Well. I think that's I, great. It was, well, I, I was, feel that. I was, I I was using hyperbole for humor. No, but it's but great. It's, it's great. Wild. You don't listen to the whole, you don't listen to the entire sonata for the last note. You don't yeah. you don't watch the play for the the last scene. 
it's yeah, the man. it's the it's the the totality of the experience, right? It's getting to do it. Yeah. Well, if I die horribly, I'm still satisfied in the game that Phil's running because I got to embody that character in that fiction. And for that brief moment of time, for me, I'm really into it. And I'm not a homicidal guy, but I'm playing a, a simpleton that's ready to kill everybody. Murder hobo. And and it just it's it's almost a little liberating, <laughs> liberating. Like it's just like this, wow. I can in fact I have I have introduced new old player, like a 60 some odd guy. I'm like, hey, we do this weird thing once a week. I think you'd be really good at it. And he's and you know what? He is absolutely loves it. Loves it. Never has done anything like this in his entire life. Retired dude. And he comes every week and he is so into it. And it doesn't matter if we're playing Traveler or if we're playing a fantasy setting or a modern setting. He is 100% engaged. He doesn't own a single RPG book, not a single one. We had to buy him his first set of dice. But he <laughs> nice. gets he gets the experience is its own reward. And okay. he embodies those characters like a pro. Because if you're if you're just there like to win, right? There's other hobbies that are going to yeah. be much better at that. Like yes. you know, board games. Yeah. Like the rules are much more defined, so much more like restraint or sports. Like there's there's other hobbies you can engage if just like you're after the chill of winning, right? And concurrence stuff like that. Mm -hmm. RPG they can they can like offer you something that's very unique, which is being this other character. This is the way I define role play, and I said that a lot. Maybe maybe there's new viewers, so I'm gonna repeat it again. That's what yeah. we have to do on YouTube, apparently. <laughs> mm -hmm. Role playing is getting in the mindset of your character, right? That's for me, that's what it is. It's not about like doing the chit chat and the talky talky and stuff like that. That's like an element of it. But really what it is is to hijacking your own thought process with this thought process of this other character that is not you, right? And at some point also it should come with like an emotional line man so now like when crispy said like i got to be this guy i got to know to feel how it was to be this other guy i got to feel how this guy was feeling like i was scared at that point i was angry at that point stuff like that right and of course there's always a damper you don't feel like unless you're a complete madman but you still like get like this emotional like reward and this like this uh this chance of like getting to the mind of somebody else it's that's the reward you get and yeah. and coming with this cool narrative right like this experience you you experience something even though you sat on your ass on front of the computer or around the table right yeah it's it's empathy the game exactly exactly it's an empathy engine 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 <laughs> in, in jeans, I prefer in jeans. Just a just a bounce off that. Um, part of because uh, you're talking about immersion, yeah, really yeah. getting immersion to another character, and um, it's <laughs> you can actually, you know, it's like a, but it's a part emotional part psychological yeah the immersion the immersion is the right? the uh the immersion is kind of the what would you say phil uh the byproduct the, the immersion is the, it comes from it naturally but really you're what you're doing is you're just staying in character like yeah. it's just a complete in character mm -hmm. yeah i guess but, i don't know the difference but yeah i guess your act I, your act of all reacts and it feels real it just oh but the makes point sense yeah. now the Maybe point is, though, is that, that the joy of the game, if you want to call it that, isn't necessarily fun. No. It's no. actually being uncomfortable. Yes. Yes. Which afterwards here. will be more exactly. than fun. Exactly. Yes. And a lot of people miss that. Oh, this isn't. The, the, the fun you know, is the reflection. Fun or make sure it's fun. Sometimes yeah. it's not going to be fun. I mean, there's As, some films yeah. you watch that are really uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but and there's times impression. where the character will be uncomfortable, and the, there, yeah. there go by proxy, the player will be uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. the fun the the fun comes through the reflection of your experiences and your 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 uh, growth during that that time. Period, yeah, right. Yeah, like so, at, like what you were saying, Azimuth. If you if you're playing in a horror, have you ever run any horror games? Have you ever done any? I'm an old man. I've run everything. Okay, so you've I've run, run these every kinds system. Of you, you can a name. successful, enjoyable horror game. Yeah. Was it fun, or was it horrifying? And then afterwards, everyone laughed about it and said that was amazing. I was terrified. 
all of the above. One of the best. Yeah, so, one of so the, my one point of my is, best friends actually turned off the mic for a moment and says, it's just too much for me. Let me know so, when the scene ends. <laughs> so that is showing that the experience is so yeah. much more than just the, hey, we had some laughs. Yeah. yeah. It, it's not just about that. It's it, You'll have, all, in my opinion, a, an excellent session, like the ones that Phil has run for us. The are ones where you have a gamut of you have you have laughter, yes, in the setting. It, there was something funny that happened, but then you also have the tension, you have the the anxiety, you have all you run through all sorts of emotions in it. And then I afterwards, you look back, games, and in totality, you say that was unfair. I can't wait till we can do it again. Yeah. Oh, wait. I've seen some of these games, by the way. I, I like. Well, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Which passively ones? watch games, and I've watched some of you guys' games. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And I agree. Which one? Oh, Which the one? last one I saw where you guys were playing a bunch of uh, prisoners and you're all in orange. Oh, yeah. That was the one from Monday. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, I, I like putting a game in the background while I'm either cleaning or working out yeah. sometimes. And That's yeah. the idea. It sounds like yeah. a yeah. – hopefully it sounds like an audio experience, you know. Yeah. That means you did good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What'd you, like what'd you think of the? the what'd you think of the time where I where I killed Doc Flamingo and cut his throat? How'd you feel about it? I was actually watching that, and um, yeah, I wasn't. That was. Uh, it was in, I may. I thought maybe I missed something because I didn't see a die roll, or did he roll? Because you're just like, oh, you're and he just kind of like. Hmm. And then, like, I, can I do anything? No, you die. No. No, no, you're not. Yeah, I Just don't. don't yeah, I like. I don't mind it. I don't mind it because I think in some circumstances, like what was it? Uh, I was watching one. Sean, uh, Sean, or I was watching one of your videos, and it was the terminal velocity thing where the girl was like, "I don't like this about five E because maximum falling damage is twenty D six." Yeah, and I don't. I don't like two hundred feet. Like yeah, and I don't. I don't even worry about that. I'm, right it's like no, you're dead. Line. You're dead. You die. You can fall eight yeah. feet and die. Much yeah. Less so like I, I don't. So mm -hmm. I was totally fine when Phil's like, and I, that's they outnumber else you, and yeah. you're, you're, yeah. He you're just, on your knees in front of them. You're on your knees in front of them. Knives. He just executes you. Yeah, it's always something roll. also about yeah. me, like in the uh, in the like in in those game, like what? Well, like what is what's what is HP, right? Like uh, just to read, like uh, about that, like HP, yeah. like they say, like oh no, it's an abstraction. It's how much you can dodge or combat and stuff like that. Then I'll why then you would resist more falling damage right that's you know you're not gonna dodge out of gravity yeah. and shit like that right you can yeah. dodge the <laughs> earth man <laughs> you you dodge dodge right. but i'm a level something... five monk it says i can no you're dead you, no, well, you know in, the, in that case you know if you're a monk and like that okay maybe you can fall from a liar but otherwise it's like oh you fell like you lose a quarter of your health every fucking 10 feet you fall. It doesn't matter how many hit points you get, right? Whatever. Just like yeah. 10 but feet. Anyway. Jeez. I just Jeez. invoke Jeez. logic <laughs> and the logic <laughs> oversees the rules and I just say you're, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it is, yeah. isn't that part of uh, when you start a game? Like what kind of campaign are we Wait. playing? Where... Yeah, that was Go my ahead. comment. Oh, that's yeah. you. Oh, yeah, so you're, you're Daniel Boyer. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, How do you your name? yeah, you're the I called you out on the uh, all the time on the Black Lodge games. Not to put you on the spot, Max, but you said your voice is shit, and I'm the one that told you, like, man, your voice ain't shit. <laughs> you just voice be self -conscious. Ain't My voice is shit. Yeah, well, it's, I don't know. It's just like I guess everybody when they when you listen to your own recording, right? It's annoying, right? I don't know. Oh, I hate my voice. Yeah, it's because yeah. your inner ear. You guys know this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like, voice, that doesn't though. sound like As me. With you have like the radio voice. Yeah, yeah. you've got a good voice. Why? Thank you. Yeah, I know you've got. You've got good voice. <laughs> I don't have a mic. It's just on my my laptop, so I don't have my cool. gear. Yeah, my rig up. Surprising. Yeah. It's, very, it's coming uh, coming pretty well. Well, Let's that's good to know. Great this is Crispy's voice is. Is it is fixed it... now? Can we? Yeah. Can we yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting right. voice is great. Get my late night yeah. DJ voice on for you guys. Oh, yeah. there it goes. There it goes. Got to play some <laughs> soft <laughs> jazz. Get some soft jazz. Some jazz. <laughs> yeah. The. I so talk about I, I had so started bad, comment though. earlier because I wanted to go to come back to it, but now you're here, so we can talk about it. Like as far as PC yeah. skins go, what are you taught on playing an alien character? And we're just talking about that, like getting the mindset of stuff and people like that. Yeah. And I'd say like. Like, I like games that are human only. I like games yep. that are, like, less gimmick and stuff like that because I think there's enough variety in the human experience that you can yeah. find a character that's interesting by playing a human. And it's going to be something you can still relate to. 
if yeah. you play something that's alien that's totally different right oftentimes it's a trap people think that they're going to play like oh my character is going to be unique because i'm playing like a, a tabaxi that is a cleric and shit like that and then and then you go back to the playing the character one? sheet the tabaxi yeah. is the cat, yes. cat, uh, cat people out yeah now <laughs> Get out. Well, that's the one race I allow because I, I'm, I'm a cat man. <laughs> cat, girls, cat girls are a blessed creature from God. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, no. man. Now we know. We now know what's on Justin's hard drive. Yeah. Well, I, I did want to ask I did want to ask that question, Max, because I knew you would push back. And I because I know you even have a video about because we I asked you that one question when you're on uh, Black Lodge, Matt, Black Lodge Games. Yep. It's about the whole, you know, men trying to play women. Yes. And then on, and then on taking another level, trying to play, you know, like I'm going to play a, a Wookiee in a Star Wars game. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, if, you know, is there a way to do it and do it right and do it well? There's oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure there is. Right. Yeah. You just go, sure there is. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. There's a way to do it and there's a way to do it right. And it's there's a way to do it. it. If you play a game like Star Wars, it's expected that maybe one of the characters is not going to be human, or maybe two, like whatever. Like when you start like well, having points all are. human, there's a trouble. But but there's a way to do it. But what I'm saying, it's a trap, right? Yeah. Oftentimes, people are going to do that yeah. instead of creating a character. I still want you to have goal. I still want you to have aspiration. I and still want you to have yeah. All those, all this other thing that we talked about, right? But so people are going to replace like all those, those, all this like. Internal, internal, with uh, night vision or whatever. Like, yeah, exactly. By, 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 like, by this. Oh, wait, oh, I'm playing, like, like what you're saying. I'm playing a draw that uh, is this thing and that. Like, well, that, that's that's what your character is, not who your character is, right? Yeah. Drow, yeah. drow like cow. Yeah. Drow. Oh, we also so, drow. um, what is a what is a good alien then? Because the I would think that the issue would be you play an alien and you're just a human. That's the issue. The Corellian. Play a Corellian. Yeah, that, well, yeah. Phil's hit it though. Phil, 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 you've got it. You're on the right I got track. It. Yeah, you've got it because that's the problem with all these yeah. exotic races is that people just play them like they're human. I think the exactly. move is figure out like a couple of alien like core beliefs or something. Yes. And then just kind of like what I, makes I think, them alien. I would assume I would assume like a Wookiees, right? Would have like his own Wookiees issues and stuff like that, but I don't see them as too far, right? They've always been portrayed, you know, they're like humanoid, they have different appearance, but they have like similar lifestyle. Well, like there right? should be some kind of cultural thing, like there's some, yes. there's some kind of thing about it. Um, and, yeah, and like super um, honor bound. Yeah, hate the idea. I like the idea of being like a hate the idea of permanency or I don't know, or something, yeah. or um, something weird like that. You know, they're clan based, so everything's clan, yeah. everything is kin. Uh, yeah, yeah, what I, what I don't like, like that too. So, well, um, but it, it has to be something that you're not just because because most people when they play a drow, they're just playing a human with a real dark tan and bleached hair. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's all it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. like it's it's not reflected in the rules how to play a drow. You and have the matriarch. to deeper. Yeah. 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 Well, now, playing what a, playing like woman right is next. easy. So you can play back, a woman. Back. Anyone can play a woman. You just think of a man I'm, I'm and taking... you remove accountability and reason. <laughs> I'm Jack Nicholson. Old, uh, Jack yeah, Nicholson. That's right. You got it. <laughs> um, I, as good I, as it gets. I, I, I see. There it is. I there think it is. would be easier for the player to play something alien if the entire party was that. Like, oh, so if you were you're really? an entire party of um, Wookies, each player would be reinforcing the mentality of being a Wookie. You think yeah, so? Yeah, but I is think everyone going to sit at the table? Drops. Well, because you, you have no contract. Oh, get out. Well, you'd understand <laughs> each other, so you wouldn't have to do that. Um, but I, I think it, until until your players were established with being outside of the role of being human, and then you could probably diversify the group, right? Like, I think I think it would be a good exercise in 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 breaking the mindset of human humanocentrism <laughs> well i would just want evidence i would want the nice player to drop. convince me I'd, i want them to convince me like phil i think a lot about what you said which is just is it going to be just a human that looks slightly different like most races in star trek stuff 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one's blue. Oh, okay. So this one is slightly different prosthetic on their forehead than the one from last week. I'm like you, but I'm devious. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I want the player to show me that they're going to play this differently yeah, than just yeah. a short human that we call a dwarf. No, well, there's got to be know, something like, different about that. Yeah. I, well, I think also like depending, like like you know, if if you play Athling, right? I get like there's like those trope, oh, they're very like uh, they're like forty people and stuff like that. But they're basically like short human that are like very like they're bon vivant, right? Bon vivant, mm -hmm. short human. Sure. That's what they are, right? And I'm okay yeah. with that. They don't bother me too much. When it comes to stuff like elves and stuff like that, like people yeah, love dwarves, or like, yeah, and stuff, like there are stuff in there, like an elves, like you're gonna play, like you're gonna live like for thousands of years. That will change you. That would. There's the, such a big impact, like this long, long life. And this is almost like never, like there's like no impact. They're just like human with like pointy ears. Sometimes they like trees a bit yeah. too much, right? Yeah, especially when they're like <laughs> too oh, much. 120 years. I'm like a teenager. It's like, are you? Yeah. Are you? So like no. are they, so they, years old? Does that mean that you should be playing them as super naive? Because if it takes them 120 years to hit teenagehood, why are you like they just very slow learner, learners? Right? Like what? It's like so this is... yeah. are, are they kind of stupid? Like as a people, you, you only get most people play <laughs> elves as hippies. Like it's just a hippie. Yeah, okay, so you want to play a hippie? Immortals. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you play yeah, they only seem anyway. wise because like they've done everything. They, they've yeah. literally burned their hand every six months for the last two thousand years. That's why they know not to touch. Oh right. Oh right. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Done that. So and, uh, basically, all the, all the ancient elves are really derpy. Just yeah. Derp. yeah. No, no, no. They're the ones that survived. Oh, yeah. okay. they, they, they've I, won I the Darwin Awards of being an elf. Lucky. The Darwin Awards. Nice. I, I want. I agree with what Sean said. I, you, you have to. I think you have to be able to show the game master that you're going to play this. That you have some concept that you're going to push. For that to play this alien race, otherwise you're just playing a human. Yeah, I like yeah. the idea of playing and, a Varga. And see, that's part of my uh, so a possible solution, if I may present. Um, and it was semi inspired by um, original Dungeons and Dragons with uh, Gary Gygax. Um, that if you play a dwarf or elf, you had to retire them at sixth level. Yeah, or I think sixth or seventh level, you could not go beyond. Only humans could advance beyond that level. Because you would go back to your homeland, and you'd lose your character. So there's this weird kind of. Oh, I didn't know you had to lose them. I thought they just didn't level anymore. Well, well, you retire them. Yeah. Or they you. don't level up. It, that's why they don't level they up don't level because you cap. have to retire them because they you. they return to their homeland. And so there's this compulsion. If you play this race, there is certain compulsions. There's certain and, uh, drives. There's certain biases. There's certain. That's also that's also what I'm I'm kind of like a defender of like the race as class because if people say, well, what does it make sense that like an elf cannot be like a wizard or like yeah, the elf the elf wizard live in elf land. If you like, yeah. if you play an elf, your class is adventure. You look at one of those weird elf that go out and hang out with human and go in the world. You're one of those weird dwarf that live the citadel and go do stuff in the world, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. is your class, right? And it's all wrapped up into one. You're, you're a weirdo among your people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the mentally deranged guy. Exactly, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I guess doing... that's how your elves are. And that's how your dwarves are. Well, well I mean, like... The... I had a race. Tell me about, about your elves, elves Max. <laughs> Show us your elves. No, I'd rather not. He's always complaining about how people tell him about his uh, tell him about their elves. Yeah, well, that's I've heard, I've heard you make that complaint like six slightly, times. Like slightly different. Like people like just want to play elves, but like it's like, yeah, yeah, what does it matter? What what does it bring to the role play? Like, what does it bring to? Does it really bring something interesting to the right? Sometimes the answer can be yes, but oftentimes it's no. Yeah. Like it, it's I mean, just, it's just, like, just a skin awesome. suit you have. Like what does it what does it change that your character is this is a is a water genesis? Yeah. Or shit like that, right? And if is the it, answer is, it, is the opportunity to play that, you know, yeah. those characteristics, then that's good. And if you and if you, or if you say, Well, I'm a human every day in real life, I want to be something else. Yeah, get out! Get good. the fuck out! <laughs> no, you see what, what usually they're what my experience is when someone says I want to play this race. I want to play what is the what's the stupid cow race in D and D? Uh, fur, 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 yeah, fur yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so usually it's because they have a they have a build. Yeah, they're oh, thinking yeah. of a build. Yes. I got this great yeah. build. That's a stupid. <laughs> I I hate that 
on its face. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's gamey true. reason, right? Yeah, that's that Th- is that's the kind of meta gaming the... that I was saying. There's that was no, the meta we were talking about. That's earlier. a meta thing, and yeah, I have yeah. no, I have yeah. no patience for that. Yeah. I would just say no. I mean, I I love playing elves and dwarves, but mostly because I want to interact with the culture of that race. Like, mm-hmm. how many human players do you have who actually know like what are the different human cultures in your world? Can you name them? Can you even name yeah. one? Are you allowed? They're to they're there. D and D anymore. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. What, what, yes. what is what is this? Gonna send the pink cartoon at you. <laughs> what? <laughs> You pretending that that culture are the same? There's some rules on this. I, I feel like I'm the only Z. guy gotta... who read the fucking book about the uh, about the cultures in D and D. Like the only one. <laughs> you this, are the only. Did, didn't they <laughs> round those I all brought, up and burn them? I brought up the different languages, and my players look at me like I'm an alien. We speak common. What do you it's mean? There are different human about? languages. Yes, they're like six different ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Esperanto. We all speak yeah. Esperanto here. That's Talk a problem you when you're trying Shatter. to convince your players to role play now. Yeah, that's it's the problem. problem. Yeah. Role play solves everything. It solves everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just, just sit down at the table and start speaking in Klingon. Get out. <laughs> that's the answer. Well, well there's Klingon. an example. What's the difference between a Klingon? Is a Klingon just a very characterized space Viking? Yes. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, super weird. Weird. Yeah. But but that, but that's the thing. Like when I, when it comes to sci-fi, so like, like in fantasy, I think sometimes like the race are so weird and so distinct and so so very characteristic that it should impact what you see more than what we get, right? You know, what we usually get. Some very few people can get it right, but in general, it's just like well, whatever, man. Just like you're just but, like a human, like in in cost, in skin suit. I, in I, I sci-fi, can't... it doesn't bother me as much because like. You're just like a people, you're not like a mystical being, you're people that grew up in a different environment, got some different adaptation and stuff like that. It should impact your culture. But like, you know, we also have like different human culture that are developed in different way based on environment, stuff like that. Am I allowed to say that? No, I'm gonna kick out of you. No, <laughs> yeah, no you're, not. you're canceled. What? Um <laughs> The environment has no basis and no blah, 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 blah. yeah Evo- evolution like about the about the neck it's all on neck down there's no evolution above that yeah I feel like the oh. in sci-fi you have a lot more of a, like a universal interspace interstellar culture probably going on you know I, I I would take it the other way Phil I'd say that in a sci-fi setting if it's if it's Even an more. interstellar thing then yeah. you should have balkanization all over the place oh you think so yeah i would because think you, so. you also have mass communication which well it depends you, on how, how well how much you push the mass communication yeah. but really yeah, as yeah. humanity spreads out i would i would th- imagine polities of all sorts that were setting up that each mm-hmm. system is different and even within a system you'd have different and and that balkanization that's, that's certainly a place i'd rather play in i'd rather play in that, that where there's a huge variety <laughs> yeah, uh, i hated yeah. starfinder i like i i have a a, a deep and abiding uh, loathing of Starfinder RPG, okay. but the one thing What's that the I, lore of that? well, I was just going to say, it's not worth spending any time on it. But they had this one insect race that the that the insect race had broken off from the the swarm or whatever it was, and because of that, the uh, they had this one tip, the only redeeming feature of this entire system. It's all for the trash except for this. They said any character any player that wants to play one of these insect race th- your character should be obsessed with the concept of individual choice mm-hmm. and so they would so these these uh insect characters would be fascinated with things like faith or and they would just make decisions just because they were so excited to be able to make their own decision and not having been driven driven by pheromones from the queen or whatever it was mm-hmm. and i thought well that's that's actually decent advice if you were going to introduce a different race mm-hmm. say here here's something that's going to be different about this race than all other races yeah. that that would be uh that that's a yeah. that's an interesting idea maybe you yeah. could port that over to other systems that's that's exactly what i'm trying to do is there's there's a it's a restriction a compulsion and a third i don't remember what it is i'm still i'm still fleshing it out but giving it to give you an example i had a player that there's an arachnid a spider race in uh, the world uh, belt okay and she wanted to play a 
What? I don't get out! No, I'm just I love I love spiders. I've kept them as pets. I've, oh, I, yeah. get out of here! Buddy of mine had a uh, tarantula. Called, they call it Conan the Barbarian. It was so big you could hear it walk across the table. Oh, jeez! Oh, God! Where's my X card? I get it's it. Are you triggered? You, you, you got you two triggered? of them right there behind you. Are you gonna? Uh, one I of those is in the closet. But I love them. Oh, the, anyway, oh, are you talking about doorknobs? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Just no, no, just, just the door. Go oh, through it. The, yeah, that's right. That's the X guy. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> but she wanted to play the arachnid. Done a cost safe space. <laughs> one of the restrictions is is they are nonverbal, right? Because uh, the the same way they breathe, spiders don't breathe through their mouth, so they can't vocal. Yeah. If think of them uh, without going into a rabbit hole. Think of the uh, jumping spider. They do this little dance. So they oh, communicate through like sign language through manipulation of their limbs. So I made it very clear to the player that she had to not sign, but she could not. <laughs> yeah, but she could not. And I had to constantly remind her that when she communicated to the characters, if they weren't looking at her, they don't know what she's saying. And so they, her, her information would get cut off and such. And so she had to constantly readapt like, oh, or like she would rap on the table to get people to look at her so she could talk to them. So I'm literally creating a restriction at the table for the the actual player in order to play the character. If someone's not looking at you, they can't hear you. Does yeah, that make any sense? Yeah, it does make and, sense. Yeah, like like sense. Nicola's saying, I said the only appeal I can see playing out of the race is is leaning into the main difference, yes. like you mentioned, exploring during yeah. play. And I think Perfect. that's what should be done. Yeah. But like the thing I say is like there's so much already you can explore without going to the other ways that oftentimes i say, like i say yeah. is it is it really worth it right is the cost yeah is the anyway like, you're 100 you know, right it's because always, it's always if that, you right? if i dial it back i'm just basically saying that her character's mute and she could have played a human that's mute yeah 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 you're 100 right but yeah at the same time, what she's I'm gonna breathe running. through her mouth or something, but, but unless she's like super ugly, it's not like she's gonna walk in a room and everyone screams and runs for the exit, right? But now she's a big spider, so it's <laughs> but it's a big spider, well, also, it's, like, normal it's accepted in, the world. in that, this that's world. Also, like, but... That was also bringing the question, the question like when you make something fantastical, but it's kind of like normal in your world, then it becomes yeah. mundane. You make the fantastical mundane, right? That's, that's another, like, another issue. It is a high fantasy world, it's not a high yeah. realism. Uh, I played low fantasy. I played high fantasy. This is a high fantasy. That's also something when you play, if you play like a tiefling, right, or whatever, like people love to play, like those fucking half demon people. But there's one in every fucking corner, and now you're not allowed to treat them any differently because it would be like fantasy racism, and like, and that's bad for some reason, <laughs> right? That's fucking stupid. Then the tiefling like, only works. It don't is. mean nothing anymore, right? Amen. Hallelujah. You're, it, you're... It's absolutely correct. If if tieflings are everywhere and they're just like everyone else. Then there's nothing to lean into. The whole point yeah, of the is to be tension. subjected to fantasy racism. Yes, yeah, and you're choosing that. The purpose. So don't come whining to me when the <laughs> when that's how the world responds to you because you chose yeah. it, and and it, you lean into that. You're the outcast. Yeah, enjoy yourself. There you go. Like yeah. Shonra got the spider of Cyanix anyway. We all know that. Yeah, so. I know <laughs> but they're, yeah, they're I crawling like through that. your brain right now, crispy. There was this thing it, it melted <laughs> my brain. Where they, where there was this movement against what are they, what are they so upset about now? Bioessentialism. They're yes. set, they're really upset about bioessentialism. So, in other words, now when you select a race, or supposedly with the next version of D and D that's coming out, that everyone's oh, going to dutifully go out and buy, they're 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 going to say that you, as the the <laughs> player, can just decide. Where to put your racial bonuses? Yeah, crispy. Yeah, you know, the new edition on the, of the D, you don't go out and buy. You go out and subscribe to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So <laughs> please subscribe for the low, low price of ten dollars a month for the rest of your no longer life. product the service. Uh, yeah. So the that that is terrible because and then it's kidney. impossible to lean into the difference yeah. and make it different. Yeah. Everyone then is the same essentially. Yeah, but that's what oh. they want. D &D yeah, now you're talking about the culture war, but that they're well, even getting. I'm just rid saying of... that it's like That's I don't allowed, yeah. even taking even taking the culture <laughs> war out of it. I'm just saying yeah. it's bad for to try to show players how to embody a race other than human, yeah. because well, it's better to say, look, these yeah. here's some some all dwarves have these uh, shared characteristics with small variations between them. 
So then you can lean into that and say, yeah, you know, it's a part of our dwarven culture that we have these magnificent beards and, and the men too. And, and they, you know, they breed <laughs> them and whatever. Yeah. So you want to have something ever. that you can lean into. And if you can't, then everyone's just a human. Why even have different races? It's just like, well, you you can have a different, you can. We're make back, it. baby. Human well, supremacy. It's, yeah, it's there you e go. It's so bad. They're even <laughs> I getting, support human supremacy. <laughs> they're even getting rid of the word race. Yeah, which they is, I it. mean, yeah. I, I don't really care about the semantics. My, my big concern is the, you're, you're just making everything samey. And, really and I don't like the sameness. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. also, like, one thing I want to say about that also, like, people sometimes say, like, oh, I want to play, like, the, against type, right? I want to play, like, this uh, orc character that try to break away from the orcish stereotype and stuff like that. It's impossible if there's no type to play against. Well, yeah. that that too. But also, like, those kind of story don't work so well in a group base thing, mm -hmm. right? That Those are for, like, if you were to do, like, a one-on-one, -on -one, you can explore that a little more. When you sure. go in group yeah. phase, now you're trying to you, because it's too something, it's something too personal that's going to take too much place out, out of your character, right? Is it be like more a distraction than I don't know? I'm just. I mean, and, it's and just another. I, I I have to get vengeance for my father. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. It's maybe. about the same level. It it would work if the uh, if you're playing against type, but the type is always reinforced. Yeah. So that it's constantly reinforced. You also need that, you also mean, need that as well, right? Then you're like, we're no. talking about shitty meta plot. Throw it in yeah. the garbage and make your own world. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's speaking, spoken from a jaded werewolf player, there, folks, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. You've heard it here first. But but it's it's the it's, it's the contrast correct. that gives attention, right? It's the contrast yeah. of the culture is uh, very distinct, but you're different. Yeah. And because you're different, that's the tension, that's the contrast. Yeah. And if you water it all down, you lose the contrast, it all becomes muddy and brown. Mm -hmm. Like, why do I still that's look one of at my this favorite, thing? That's one of my favorite parts of playing a different race, and especially in fantasy things, is that uh, you, you give the character the ability to develop the culture of the race. I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. And also, I don't the... care about what it's typically seen as. I'm but making the, a new yeah. world every well, time I play a game. So, Phil, when yeah. you say making a world, a new world every time, like a new world every time you play the game, what do you mean? Any, anytime I start play? a new game, like campaign or okay, one shot. So, like the player then in that new game, what yeah, they create the character, define what it what dwarven culture means. Yeah, tell me what a dwarf is. So they have, and this is this is maybe sounds different to Z and Azimuth here, who also has Z in his name. And the the uh, <laughs> the idea that uh, we're not necessarily bound by what the Sad. editor the editors at uh, Watsi or Troll or Games yeah. or any of these companies have said <gasps> what? is that we're the player <laughs> will is. decide. I I am bound by the guys that make uh, that game right. Wendy's. Don't say it. <laughs> the Wendy's RPG. The we, Wendy's. Played it. We, we played it. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to look that up. I'm sure it's archived. It's yeah. it's out. Yeah, yeah, you can, can find, find it on all of our channels. channels. Yeah. Yeah. It was a one yeah. shot. It's only an hour and twenty minutes. That's right. It's fast. Yeah, and then Phil couldn't stand it anymore. And he's like, That's <laughs> it was it. the game. It's just <laughs> one. It's just long it's puns the whole time. It's <laughs> It's not part bad. of Ma part Max of does our, really good. Yeah, part Max of RPGs well. are the puns and the shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. See, it doesn't really work for us uh, because we play more of a serious style. I would say, like we're I not serious in there. Did, did you were, you we were trying that? to be serious through the Wendy's game. That's what we thought it would be funnier Fires, if yes. we were all like super yeah. into it. Did uh, Did okay. any of you end up ordering Wendy's by the end of it? <laughs> uh, Rick did. Rick yeah. Rick had it coming, but they uh, skipped the dishes or Uber Eats or whatever he had ordered. Didn't actually yeah. deliver his food. Like he was. And that's why oh we were God. late. That. That's why we were late because we were waiting for Rick's Wendy's to come so he would be so drinking. It. Anyway, yeah. yeah, there's no Wendy's around. That's here. too realistic for a game. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> yeah, then you're just a method actor, you dirty method yeah. actors. <laughs> no, but uh, and the, 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 that's something also I want to talk about as well. Like I mentioned, like uh, when you're talking about social contract on uh, the Discord, right, with Crispy, and I say like, well, don't do like those fucking out of character jokes, like the the '80s reference and the pun and stuff like that, because if you do that, 
that tells me you're not in the mindset of your character, right? You're not like those fucking like 80s joke and 80s reference. They don't exist in this world or they're not in the so now you're not you're not think you're not having your mind you're not didn't replace your mindset by the mindset of your character. You're still you and just like yeah, trying to that's the point. point at the table. Like that's fucking yeah. annoying. You're trying to be some kind of poor canned up uh, stand up comedian yeah. and it stupid mm. you're stripping away my whole personality what am i supposed to do <laughs> well, get yourself not, down to the walmart buy yourself a better that's the thing that's the thing have your character or personality come to the table yeah yes mm. yeah. yeah yeah absolutely that's what we want I definitely yeah. think there's humor in our games for sure oh yeah definitely there is yeah, yeah but it's it's, it's in it's character humor great yeah. yeah my favorite I, if i could toot my own horn once if you'd let yeah. me do that max we we uh, we were I was playing this really low intelligence uh, player, and Doc was playing this officer like educated. He was real well educated, and he and he says uh, something about fauna, and my character he pipes up, yeah, and the animals too, and I just thought that was the, <laughs> I was like yes, I I got my really stupid funny. out. I was able to play the stupid. What made what made me laugh is when uh when you took the rock from me like he wanted to trade the rock from like this rock I don't think on the river <laughs> and nothing special scared. but he looked like special. so suspicious <laughs> and he, I, he got more my shoes I want my shoes back and he want to trade the rock and I say all right and then he just like takes I, take the the rock. I didn't even know what to do with like, it <laughs> <laughs> and I just I, I at you awkwardly as I put the rock underneath the guy's head <laughs> anyway yeah. I understand you're all role playing wizards, but how do I play my 18 charisma character? <laughs> oh, that's oh. great. Phil will tell you how to do that. That was like, how? That's what First of all, about, you're uh, not an 18 charisma character. Hmm? You're playing a real thing. That you're playing. Yeah, okay. yeah that's it. That's the you're step one. The stat. Step one. You're not just playing the stat, you're playing the character. Oh yes, I, I'm my character is charismatic. How yeah. am I char playing so charismatic? Think of, think of a character that you've seen <laughs> in film or TV or or fiction of some kind that was very charismatic. Think of that character, and then I don't mm -hmm. like charisma, especially with a start with charisma. That that can come out in many different ways as well, right? Like charisma is not just one thing. Mm -hmm. It's not just like on the and, hmm? and and you don't have to. Depends you don't have system, to. Right? You, you mm -hmm. still have a dice roll. So you don't have to worry about okay, well, I, I don't know the exact right thing to do here, right? But you can just say mm -hmm. you can just describe what it is that you were attempting to do and roll the dice. Just talk yeah. about how hot you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it just was make a, it until you make it. This was literally hot. this was literally <laughs> the topic of last week's stream <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, about the social skill and stuff like that. All to four D social skill and basically what we say like yeah, you, you don't have to do the rousing speech. You can just say like. You give an idea and what what you intend is, what you're trying to touch and stuff like that, and say, and then make a rousing speech, and mm -hmm. depending on the rules. So like, you can still use the use yeah, the or your high charisma, charisma, right? Like so you're gonna be like, I, 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 my best pickup line as I walk up to the bar with the you know the the blonde at the yeah. end of the bar, and you roll your dice. And yeah. also, like there there are some there are some uh, there are some buying. Hi, I'm Z. Nice to meet me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's such a pleasure for you to meet me. Yeah, no, but and then you roll the dice. Like, like, some high end, right? Because if your character, yeah. if you know what your table, your character is charismatic and stuff like that. You go, you you want to say like, oh, I'm and I go in with my best pickup line, and you say something yeah. that might not be a good pickup line in real life, but you know we're gonna do the buy and stuff like, okay, right? Yeah, because you. Oh, it was a great yeah. pickup line. Like, oh, did you hurt yourself when you fall from heaven? Like, heaven some shit like that, right? she wow. was like, he was gonna break. Uh, she was drunk enough for it to be a good pickup line. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just spread drunkenness everywhere you go. But, but I think that the the answer to you, Z is a great question, and the answer really is you you think of that, you think of a, a, a character of some kind that embodies that personality of highly charism charismatic so you're thinking yeah. i'm playing tony robbins or something I'm like playing that sean right? james i'm playing bond. sean connery i'm playing sean connery as james bond i'm playing you know one of the old movies with the real like the, the well, what, what is it this? fred astaire or whatever humphrey bogart. Yeah, okay. humphrey bogart kind of that kind of like i'm just smooth what, what was sean connery's character's name in zardoz all right what? wasn't it zardoz no, no, All that I know was the, the he was wearing thing. some questionable outfit. <laughs> I, I just happen to keep running into the same problem of as soon as my character opens his mouth, who's supposed to be the captain with 
that there is charismatic that takes the charge. I say something, the opposite happens that I expect <laughs> because right. that's how the game us interprets it and the chaos ensues. And mm -hmm. uh and well, I've had it one too many game. times where I feel like a fool as a role player. Oh could, be God, a, could be it. Could be you're playing the wrong game. system, man. Could you be you're okay. playing. Could be. Could Here's, be. Yes. This is the whole reason why I got on the YouTube so I could play with people. I got sick of my GM not letting me be cool. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like my GM just really wants to be better than me for some reason. No, I Phil, you're that absolutely right. So times. You're absolutely right, Phil. Because if you're playing that high charisma guy, why are you having to roll on everything? Why is the GM fucking with me? Yeah, that, Thank you. Every time, Thank that, every you. time the game master is calling for a player to roll, it's yeah. introducing a point of failure. That's what it's doing. That's it, also like it, a, anyway, go ahead, Max. Yeah. I, I, made, I made a video about that. Like I, when I, I was talking about like a uh, PVP has no place in uh, in role playing game. I forgot the name of that. And that's what I'm talking about. Like I'm all for character versus character. You know that in my game. Like you know, it's like I love. You know, I welcome that like wholeheartedly. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like. The 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 whole all the all like all the safety are off like in my game in that character versus character, player versus player I don't like and player versus player is if you get upset because your character did something to my character and now I'm upset against you that's fucking shit but it's also like trying mm -hmm. to one off each other and if you try to play like a a charismatic character and you do your best you open your mouth you're trying to portray some charisma even though it might not be your strong suit or whatever right. But then the player always have to one up you with every so all of his NPC. Like all of his NPC is gonna come up more charismatic than you. That kind of suck as well. That's also yeah, it does. That can, get that guy out of here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's not yeah. That, get that guy out of the game. Uh, if, I, if he's I, just I, constantly doing that to you, yeah, he's out of there. Yeah, Sorry, Z, I know that that's, you probably have limited options like me. Like I, oh, you got yeah. unlimited options. You got YouTube, you got a camera, and you got good audio. Yeah. You know, we can help you <laughs> out. I, I could well, see it, it's. I could see a time right. for for player v player as long as it's not malicious. Like there there could be something happening, but the second character versus it, character, or player yeah, yeah, versus yeah, yeah, player. yeah, character versus character. Go sorry. explain yourself now. Um, like explain this yourself. this this, yeah. this, this could happen. Words. Like I I could see it happening, but the second the second it becomes game master versus player, the game is over. Yeah, the, yeah. that yeah, that but... that game master said I've ended the game. Because it's supposed to be a cooperative experience. Like we're all supposed to be there working together to create yeah. this experience. Like create, like, I, I, create this I, immersive. I'm coming world. back to the same thing. The reward is the experience. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's if you're always if you're always not cool, then it, the experience it, sucks. It, it, yeah, it's, it does. It's not supposed to be a torture chamber for your characters or your players. Yeah. It, and you want to make your other player shine. Okay, you don't want to You the don't. Want, you're not trying Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Like, stop Literally trying to play yourself, right? Stop trying to look like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm always gonna one up my player. I'm gonna be funnier. I'm gonna be smarter. I'm gonna come with a better player. Yeah. I'm gonna be come with a cooler character. No, let your let let the other player shine and give them their time to shine as well. Like you know, like yeah, you don't have and, to always be in the spotlight. Exactly, That's and if and if you have to always be in the spotlight, then you're not playing your character. No. Nope. Yeah. Another and you thing, have like issues. You need to <laughs> and you've got issues. I have issues, obviously. Phil has been very <laughs> Phil Phil has been very patient with me. Max oh, yeah, has been gosh. very patient. No one has been more patient than Rick. Uh, I just interrupt well, all the time. It's I, so well, bad. I, I, thing, will, I will call out uh, Shauner. There's sure. not no Mr. Ball. Your funeral. That's a single player. <laughs> what? Sorry. Well, he said no Mr. Bond, right? Like that's that's. But th there is a time for a Mr. Bond, and that is a solo player game. There's it's a, a quote, dude. No, it's a quote. Like, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. No, Mr. Bond is saying no, Mr. Bond. I missed the quote marks. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Quote. <laughs> we all have like our time. Or... Yeah. One before we go into a James Bond debate, one thing that might help as well is: Are you are you um, narrating or role playing before you roll? Because if you oh, roll before, you you're attempting to do, then yeah. you roll. Usually, I, I so you should narrate. put the narrative before the dice that authenticate the, the action, or do you? Authenticate you don't assume the, the result. You never uh, assume okay. the result. Yeah, that, that's actually a point of disagreement that we have. I think I'm yeah. amongst our group, right? Because I'm the guy that say like, I like, I like if you roll before you narrate. Max isn't even okay. asking for rolls. Yeah, I'm not. A, yeah, I'm saying like, you want to try something. You know, I'm gonna ask you for a roll. Like, you know. You can just make the roll and then tell me what happened. Like, tell me like what, well, so you, so you don't have to, you, so it's, for me, it's just like skipping the step of like, 
I tried to do this role, mm. but this happened. We can just go to this happen, right? I don't need yeah. to, you know. See, and I stop. I just like to know? stop the turn before. Like, so I just say, I, I describe what I'm about yeah. to attempt. And then I stop my turn there and then roll. Yeah, yeah right? you don't want to but, say I try to. No, you don't have to say I, I try. You yeah, could just always, say you could just describe it right up to the point where a roll is required. Yeah. Then you stop yeah, your well, turn there. See, we're on the same page. Yeah. One of the things I coach is uh, I I I have this uh, methodology called blurb, which is of course just means like a little short description, like maybe one sentence, and you're supposed to build up. Like I draw my gun or whatever, then you roll your dice, and then yeah. you follow up with another narrative. So how do you do that with a social role? It's to be the pretty much well, like I can't remember if it was you, Max, that gave the example in a past video. Why would you go into this big long speech in a in a social yeah. challenge when you rolled a one, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. You can actually because you'd be like, you know, four score and seven years ago, our forefathers, but you rolled a one. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, everyone's turned away from you. Oh, you know the thing, yeah, the yeah. thing. Like I hate, you know, I hate the way like they're the pitching right? shits oh, on your head. That's what you thought. You, that, that's how it came out in your mind. But actually, oh, it sounded like yeah. it's like you just like yeah. Yes. Like, Someone really yells out, like, "Hey, like, that's nice. Lincoln." You, you walk up to the <laughs> yeah, yeah, plagiarized Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you walk up to the woman in the nightclub. You roll a one and go. Oh, I'm. I got no chance. I'm not even gonna. Eat. Yeah. Give the line. I'm just gonna leave it. And you and know? again, when I say like I say like I, you know, I I'm okay with like I like usually the advice people say is like oh players should only roll when the GM asks for a roll. But I have like player I, I I can trust. I have player like that. Oh, for sure. All nice. GM at some point, and I wouldn't recommend that necessarily with every group. And the same no. thing, like I say, like you can just roll, and then tell me what happened, right? Because you know, like I trust you. But again, I wouldn't trust that with them, with any any kind of player because yeah, some I people wouldn't trust like, some... Oh, I roll like shit. So I'm now I'm gonna change my action. To something in consequential. In consequential, yes. when what I was planning was yeah. to jump over this chasm. Yeah, they're right? gonna ret -co retcon it. Yes, or, exactly. Or my, my 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 pet peeve is when you have somebody that's gonna do the whole. I'm going to persuade the nobleman to give me his castle. Oh, look! I rolled a twenty. Shut yeah. up! I didn't. I you're you're absolutely not doing that. Uh, and get out of my house. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, that's just not well, it's not acceptable. That's why people Uber? go don't roll until I tell you to, because yeah. we're trying to avoid those mouth breathers out there that are gonna say, Well, my I have this my perception perception is plus 25. And when I roll and I rolled a natural 20, so you have to forget that. That's nonsense. That's yeah, but I we can't. we trust each other. So with, with Max's style of just saying, Hey, I trust you guys to roll, that's set up in the social contract before we start playing. And in his game, even though that's not normally how I do things, I was doing what he suggested because that's his. It's he was running the game. He set the social contract. That's and we trust one another to do that. Mm -hmm. But you can't just have any mouth breather off the street for that because no. the, yeah. there's they're going to abuse it because they're trying to win the game because they still haven't clued in to the the major thing that you have to understand, which is the experience is the reward itself. Mm -hmm. And until yeah. they get that. Well, it's not about the experience points or the plus one longsword. It's about going through that dungeon. It's about experiencing it. a fictional world in the yeah. context of that world yeah. to the point where it feels like you're actually there. And, and if that's a yeah. dungeon or or like I, I could see well, okay, Phil disagreed with or the me. city. Phil, huh? Phil or, or the city or, or the fields. Um nah, that's good. The 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 example you give. Uh, crispy of the the castle yeah that that's absurd but at the same time i could see okay yes. you got into a game of cards with a noble or some shit and you talked me into putting some tower on the the borderlands with a, a couple hundred acres around it right on the table and you won well that's that, that you're still getting something but you burden the player with that that is now an anchor they're bound oh, yeah. to. I can yes. turn anything into an albatross or a white elephant yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But the the, so, the issue I'm talking about, Justin, is those that'll say, "Oh, well, well, I know this should be impossible, but there's a one in five chance. There's a one in there's a five percent chance that I'll roll a twenty and then it works." That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's why if you don't trust your players, then it's dangerous to say, "Oh, you can decide mm -hmm. when to roll," because well, they'll just walk into some place and go, "I roll perception." I, I, yeah, I get I that, but like I get that and 
I, I, I got that you, I, I give that you explained that, but uh, the, the point of my example is that there are ways that similar things can be done without them being cheaty. Yeah, sure. it's all it's all a matter of a nuance, right? It's just like uh, be a fucking like use your fucking brain, like, right? I don't know. I like you say uh, similar things. Don't. You said well, similar things. Well, what do you mean? Your example was like the guy comes in, gets the one in five chance to to whatever, to, yeah. like get the trading like or whatever, right? Where mm -hmm. if if you want to play like a realm game, there are ways to go about it without it being absolute cheese ball. Like the, the sure, yeah, but domain like, play that's yeah. different, yeah, exactly. You're, you're role playing it true, and it's, the you, same, it's also the same thing like, oh, trying to convince like the, the, the princess that you just met, you know, to uh sleep with you and let her like, ram, right, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just met the princess and, and we're off to Vegas to get married. By Elvis. Give you a, a peck on the cheek, right? You know, it's not gonna be like the same yeah. thing, right? It's like, yeah, it's mm. it, that's what that's what I'm getting at is that it, I don't yeah, like it, the well, just. Anyway, that's a I mean, I mean, yeah. if if that happens, then the whole world should react to it that it's yeah. serious. Like, what exactly. what do you mean? Our prince lost this uh, this fiefdom that he was supposed to manage to what a con man that just came us? in and like yeah yes well, like exactly yeah. yeah I can't the, remember the, who that said player it. like that character is just gotten assassinated within 20 minutes so yeah i wouldn't roll it would be like it would be like uh, Phil yeah. when you when you slit the throat you'd just be like. So, he was in a net. Yeah, <laughs> he you was guys with knives <laughs> doing next. We keep using. Hey, so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I either heard it on your channel or I heard it on the Black Lodge's channel, or it might have been Sean, or I can't remember. Someone summed it up really, really in one sentence: a social challenge isn't mind control. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that the Black Lodge. Uh, was Amen. That. Hallelujah. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, and you just invoke logic, and lo yeah, because yeah. I have, have the, like three prongs, right? You got story you got sure. mechanic and you got logic and logic will supersede rules at times because the rules can't cover everything you can't no, cover and, everything like every phenomenon that's also like when uh, christy was saying earlier like role play sol solve everything that's also a case of role playing solving something because if you're the game master and you role play those character right yeah you're you put yourself in this mindset of this prince temporarily yeah. right while you're role playing him no, mm -hmm. he's not gonna agree of giving you his castle for because the other guy like made Hold a good argument point. or shit like that. So like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yes. yeah. quite the contrary, I'd punish the player for attempting it. Yes, well, I mean, you could, in the story, yeah. not the in not the, the player, the character. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I'd punish both, but yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> well, well, just, that just, is, just, if you have this kind of character, shake it the fuck. You have this kind of player at your table. Punishing the character will be punishing the player because they don't. Because they're out to win. They made the yeah. yeah. Well, if you roll high enough, like you may avoid execution. It's or... like yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's one of the reasons why I gave my my example uh, to, to Crispy's thing is there's a time when you need to punish the player for being an asshole, and there's yeah, a time the where mm -hmm. the, <laughs> in the parking lot <laughs> with a baseball bat, <laughs> yes, with nails in it, I'm slashing your tires. <laughs> oh no no no. I was just thinking of what you bring. Maybe you should better play. Yeah, if you want to bring, you know, you know, assault charges. Ultra violence. Yeah, no. Ultra violence is the beginning. I'm glad I. I'm glad I haven't disappointed you. I feel like I've been drinking the wrong thing online. Never once. No, you're right. You're right, Justin. I I've been flipping, but you're right. You have. There is a time where you have to sit down with the player and say, "Listen, you're not getting it. the The idea isn't here to win. You're not trying to win." that you're trying to have an experience that we're sharing together and it's an amazing thing yeah. when we can all we can all reside in this pretend world and we're all hearing and, and imagining things that are close enough together that are harmonized together that it's a group experience it's not just you imagining it like you're reading a good book mm -hmm. or something it, yeah. there's something to be said the, that it's a social experience too but yeah. yeah you have to explain that to the player and say yeah this kind of thing you're not going to be doing that anymore you're if fired. you want to come back yeah. yeah, yeah, and well, sometimes you have to tell a player like, you know what, it's not working. Our style yeah. just doesn't mesh. Right? Yeah, just tear off the bandaid. We're all men here. You can just say no. It's well, yeah, you know, this isn't working for you. It's not working for me. Get out. <laughs> no, I, I'm much more I, tactful than that. <laughs> I guess I'm I guess not. that's uh, that's the point where I I struggle a lot because I'm I've come here uh, like like I moved. 
I basically moved to yeah. the friend circle who plays a lot of games. And I've uh, played over the years when I visited. Now that I moved here, we play a lot more. So it's the same friend circle. I'm not yeah. kicking them out because I uh, because they yep. dislike the way I GM'd and so they yeah. want to play yeah. a different character. I'm mm -hmm. still meeting mm -hmm. them and playing with them because because we are friends. Yeah. And then uh, we play games together. So yeah, how do I, I turn it into a board game group? Yeah. So so Z, the, like your I mean, next, I mean your next question? I mean, we is? all. So yeah, the the question is, uh, we all love role playing games. I'm trying to do other things sometimes, but then we just don't find the time to do it because well, nobody is as invested into tabletop, uh, uh, into board games or war game. We yeah, want to play I, characters in a world. But I think that's how do game. I? Yeah, go, go ahead. Finish, Andy. finish yeah, your well, question. He's, he's getting to the point. So, so I've had several moments where, where it felt like, okay, you have this character concept. I'm a lizard folk. I want to become a dragon. I have a plot point to become a dragon. There's actually a dragon whelp. He can give you the powers to turn you into dragonborn. Then I've created a couple of steps on how he would theoretically become a dragon. Maybe bathe in dragon's blood, something like that. Uh, like rough outline over the next 10 sessions, he could achieve something like that if he becomes strong enough. Yeah. Then at that one session where uh, they meet the dragon whelp, the player is not at the table, but the character is. He gets the chance. He accepts the request uh, to uh, to actually, actually, I want to become more like a dragon. He becomes the dragonborn, but it was like an emerald dragonborn, like one of the new d d stuffs. And when the player came back the next session, he realized he's green now. He wanted to be a red dragon. And he and the next session he said, uh, I'm coming with a new character. And I did not figure that out for like six months until a different player told me like that was his actual that was his actual reason for changing character because the player never fucking talks to me about this. That's that's so, the old, <laughs> not the old fucking kind of worm you got there. Yeah, man. I feel like, like, yeah. I feel like I it's okay. Like it's okay. Like uh, your character having like goals and right stuff like stuff he want to do. Right? Okay, I want to play. Like, I'm this lizard man that dream of becoming a dragon. Don't yeah. fucking plan I had like for ten sessions. Don't like you know no. this might happen stuff like that. Stay fluid. Like, no, no, I have like like, like, like powerpoints. Fine. How would he do it? How would he do it? Like what is in my world that is mechanically possible? What does uh, the sure. world support? So I had that set out, and I knew yeah. this first dungeon will have uh, a dragon. Uh, a young dragon that has the possibility, but that, that, let, 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 let him uh, that discover, let, yeah. let him discover that figure play, that right? Don't yeah. tell him that, don't tell that. Like, that's also something I talk uh, I talked about before, like uh, the epistemology in role playing game. Like, your your character, like the character, knows stuff about the world because he lives yes. in that world, not because the GM mm -hmm. told the player. And a lot of the stuff he knows can be wrong or can be, can be like just like old folk tale or like legend and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah. Propaganda. So well, use that. Like you know, the player doesn't have to need to know. And then, then like the whole thing uh, about like this them. happened, like like and this is a kind of problem. Like this was the goal of his character, and now it happened while is away from the table. That's just fucking bad timing, right? Just like yes. Yeah. So, can you put well, that on the right? Mega unlucky. Uh, if you had been a little more loose about it, you could have shifted. Yeah. Shifted that yeah. to when he was there. I, I I guess I guess there was always the chance where like they continue the adventure and then return to you actually had this possibility. Do you want to ask the dragon again? Like, yeah, do you want to return to him like, when he's also, at the like, table? Try try not to make like like I understand that you say okay, how could that be possible in game, right? In the mechanic and stuff like that. You don't have to think of that like that way in advance, like figure it out at some point at some point you just happen in the you can just like make it up on the spot and that's something you get better at as well like yep. now at some yeah. point like improv it you happen like in this situation and now say you know what the player is there like you didn't have to plan because now you plan in advance you're kind of married to that idea oh, okay if you make this he could achieve this goal if you keep it fluid and you don't plan in advance at some point you're gonna end up in a situation where the player is there and now you say well mm -hmm. now it would be a good opportunity to give him what he wish, right? What is like? Did the his, player his ever make any effort to find a dragon whelp or find any information about how to achieve yeah. this goal? I mean, th this was in the first uh, several sessions, like the first dungeon. Okay, what what are your characters like? What do you want to do? Let's keep this loose. We might make a campaign out of it, but it was not set yet. So okay, I so planned. Does the like, character ever actively search for a way to become a dragon? 
that was his background story, basically. Uh, this is why I'm on adventures. Mm. I want to become a dragon, and for that, I need to do like powerful things. Nah, I need I'm to not, find a I'm way. Not basically. being clear. What I'm saying is, when the player is playing his character during a session, does he ever yes. make an action or take a turn to say, "I'm going to go look for rumors about dragon whelps," or "I'm going to do something that helps me achieve the goal that I've set for myself"? No. I they guess. don't give him anything. They they don't, don't you owe him anything. absolutely nothing. Yeah. If it, yeah. someone just hands you a backstory okay. and never brings up shit, nothing. Get out. No <laughs> yeah. the, the, oh. That means. Oh, I see what you mean. They have zero. They have zero investment in what they're claiming their backstory is, so they get zero <laughs> payoff for it. I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with Shonor. <laughs> <Son of Lord>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I've been around the block. I've had my face of uploading all of my games for a while. But you should be and, uh, reacting. Yeah. You should be reacting as a GM. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It's an honor to be shunned. Ab absol like. Absolutely. Uh, that's a fantastic point. I will write this down. Like, if my players want to interact with the background, they should yeah. bring it up into yeah, that's the That's why I stopped asking for player background, because if they're not going to bring it up in the game, then yeah. I don't. It cares. doesn't exist. It's not yeah. my job. It's not yeah, my so. job to bring your background. Like, you know, just yeah. like, just like I was also... telling Azimuth before, it's not your job to get the players to be proactive and act, and act in the game. That's I kinda, their I... job. I kind of started agreeing with Rick, though, that if you have a couple of NPCs tied to the backstory, they make like pre-prepared pushes. Yes, that you can throw into the game yeah. if you yeah. if action slowing down, you can say, "Okay, that sister you talked about here now." Yeah, but it's also like if you if you're willing to be fluid about that as well, right? Just like, oh, maybe like, oh, you got like an enemy from like a, a governor, like that punch you in the face, right? Whatever, just like yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and how has your personality doesn't... changed because you you punched the governor in the face? Like the, you're gonna yeah. Play that punch character. me in the face, Crispy. Yeah, the governor punched him in the face when I was just a bum. He so, <laughs> what I, was done. I guess here, uh, an, another situation that has puzzled me so much of my players shows up. Uh, my character is a paladin who happens to uh, be with a friend who took a piss. His friend was the guy who, who should be blessed by an angel to become a paladin, but he went for a piss by the pigs, he got blessed instead. So, so what? he's just a farmer who's a paladin now, and because oh, he believes cool he deserved it, you know, he he's being righteous and everything. So I I see it as a dungeon master. Okay, that's a great hook, something that I can take and pick up and throw in. The angel shows up later on. Like there has been some clerical issues uh, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that uh, that I don't want my <laughs> boss to know face. about. <laughs> So how about uh, you do something holy and righteous and uh, it will all look good in the books. And apparently my player hated that so much he wanted to throw out his character too. What? That's the good <laughs> role play yes. material right there. Yeah. Yes. That's, so, so I'm holding my head like, why do you create uh, backgrounds that if I'm not supposed to interact with them? Like, yeah. I saw it That's as an opportunity. That's why yeah. he was right. I don't yeah. know, right. That yeah. that's definitely uh if you just um, never knew about that, he'd be happy because he'd never bring yes, it up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It sounds uh, like you got interpersonal conflicts at yeah. the table. It's, it might not be the He's game, it might be the individuals you're gaming I, with. I, yeah. I will I will just say it, it's because they're all Germans and I'm Swiss. So uh, oh, man. Not... <laughs> yeah, I have a rule about gaming with Germans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you do with Germans is march. Yes. <laughs> Justin, you're on the line. <laughs> that rule exists specifically for me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's tricky. But, uh, yeah. but that's it's why if you have a player that's doing that, see, you yeah. you just rip up their backstory in front of them. Like honestly, done. Like you're yeah. we're we're yeah. not even going with there. Yeah. I'm ignoring all of your backstories until unless well, you actually want to do something with them. Yeah, because yeah, when the campaigns okay. you want to do consistency instead of uh yes. and, preparation. And, and, and so your they... your prep is what happened previously on these games. Yes. And keep that persistent through and you know, yes. I would say Amen. like if next time you start a campaign and stuff like that, right? Tell your player you want to try something that a bit different. Like you know try to that's what I did. In the, in the, that's in what I did stuff. And you say like yep we're gonna try like don't come up with my your backstory up front right keep it simple yeah. but then feel free if you want to interject something like you know like once you're in the campfire 
and you tell your story to your fo- because you have like a little bit of downtime and stuff like that. Now it's time to make it a backstory, and now you can make it and you can tie it to the world and what we've seen so far much more because now you know the world and we went through that, right? If you go, mm-hmm. if you try to make all, everything up front, then you get married to that and if things don't come up as you wish, right? It's just like you have some point, right? You have an idea, keep it vague, and then you can like precise it as you go. And it's the same thing when you're GM and you create your world. You have some bullet point, you have some idea that you can tell the player, oh, it's like this, but that, whatever. Keep it general. And then as you play true play, thing get precise, thing get defined. Not only by you, yeah. by the G, by the player as well, right? They, 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 they make up on the spot a detail about this church or this like a religious organization. <laughs> Just run with it. Now it become canon. They added something to your world, and now it's cool. And now, like, they feel integrated that world, and they can integrate their character in that world, right? Uh, a lot of these details should come out in conversation either with other PCs yes. or with GM NPCs. Yes, that you have. It's like if they want to talk about it, then your GM NPC can ask. Yes. Mm. Because, well, of course. Oh, what's that? Conversation what was that church people? like? And, and yeah. my my advice for what it's worth, if just some random guy on the internet, but my advice is. <laughs> Just start with your player group. Just start small. Just say something like, you know what, guys? For this night, for the, our game tonight, at no point will I move your characters. Yeah. We're just going to start there. Mm-hmm. We're not going to worry about anything else. We're just going to say, from now on, for this game, I don't move you. And we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And it'll be uncomfortable for the first half hour because everyone's used to the game master just saying, so you walk into the tavern. And there's Don't the flinch. tavern keeper. Yeah. And then he you walk up to the bar. And so the, the so game you guys is just are basically, moving you all over yeah. the place. Just start with something small like You're that. You're a human dice roller at that point. Just, just start yep. something small. Thank like you. Saying, I've said I'm something not gonna similar. Do that. Yeah. Just do that. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. and then build on it over time. Isn't, isn't that practically the opposite of the of what Asimov said uh, <laughs> earlier about like creating scenes? Uh, it's a, what a player it depends on what he means. That's why yeah. I was asking those questions. I wasn't just oh. being a jerk, although I was being a bit of a jerk. Tone. Sorry about that. <laughs> I but, like it. I, I, but but I it's because that aren't beat up. Don't. That's why I was asking. Like, so who sets the objective? And uh, like, because because I was trying to get at. Well, is this just a, a a ride, a nice amusement park ride that you're on, or is so, this something that? I think this is a little. We should drill into this a little bit. So oh. a lot of our games. I've noticed that we've been kind of neutral moral or bad guys. What? Well, you're, you're just typically you those cult, games, right? your objectives will drive uh, yeah. the story a lot. But if you're a superhero and my job, my goal is to protect the city. Now, like you're not really making a story out of that you're re- as a character you're reacting you're reacting, you're reacting. to criminal mm-hmm. element and what are like the that. So in that the situation city. the gm does yeah. have to generate events we like should try that we should we that. should do something along yeah we should lines. do good yeah, guys. we should do good guys because we yeah. we tend not to <laughs> well <laughs> i think funny stories get old real quick guys. Well, I, I agree with you, Azimuth. Usually, like I, I had a long standing <laughs> rule for my in person game that you're the heroes. And when you're not a hero, then I control you because I control the bad guys. Yeah. So it, now it's been a long standing thing that we've done is that you, you don't have to be good guys, you just have to be heroic. So you, you can yeah. be the anti hero, yeah. but as soon as you're evil, you're mine. I take over. And, and that was because we evil campaigns usually just devolve into murder in or hobo in if there's no role play. Yeah. They, work, they can work with role if, if, if you're role playing role player. playing solves everything so if you can yeah. role play it'll solve it but uh i like phil i like your idea that uh i, I like your idea yeah. that we should try something where we're we are the heroes in, but like it's the, interesting you know, that you just mentioned that like because uh it's true that we didn't really play like game where we're heroes and good guy except no. the wendy's game the Wendy's one, and that was one where you were like, I was directionless. I didn't like that was your main complaint. I'm like, commanding the the uh, the what's that yeah. other one that CNC game that Rick was running? You were kind of heroic there, weren't you? I, I mean, was so much. I was the dirt pre- piece. Yeah, you were. Okay. Uh, like, yeah. We, we, I, w- I was getting there. My character was getting there. Yeah. I yeah. Eventually, there's a there's eventually there's a big bad, 
and mm -hmm. he is manipulating events and you're actively trying to stop right so that's mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. yeah you can kind of pick your strategy i think in a werewolf game um you also can kind of i'm curious to see what a sandbox werewolf game is like in the werewolf just, game we weren't bad guy yeah we weren't bad guys we were we were good guys in a sense i yeah. i don't think uh i just think that if you can avoid moving player characters around yeah. then yeah. you're already on a better track like you're already that first step to actually role playing yeah but it's I, true it's yeah. true what Phil says. Like in the, like I think maybe like I was thinking about that where like you guys were talking and <laughs> I think talking, like there's a, talking, something talking. something specific about superhero game maybe <laughs> that like uh that yeah if you're supposed to be like those product of the city and then the GM said oh there's a bank robbery going on like it's kind of like a push that you almost said well okay then we'll go yeah. there right <laughs> just like <laughs> like well, the bad thing busy. Up, right? Yeah, but they should respond mm -hmm. in, in a way that's appropriate for their character. If they're playing that character, then maybe that hero doesn't care. Whatever, I hate the banks, you stupid banksters. They're the biggest crooks here. Whereas then, someone you know, else then, is well, like, then, oh, are you are you playing the superhero? Role, role, then are you you know now are you? Well, back you'd have to like decide in advance. Like you have, to, that's where you have to decide what kind of yeah. superhero. Like you're you're playing the the that personality. So yeah, like yeah. someone will be gung ho, like a militant libertarian. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> Good. You should decentralize all of it anyway. Yeah, but it they, but there, there's, it's you know, you just, it's not you're just real. describing. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you, Azimuth, describing what's happening on in the city. Oh, like it comes across the police scanner that there's a, you know, shots fired at the, you know, city national bank uh, hostage situation, and then, but it's up to the characters to decide. The player characters have to decide how they're going to interact with that. Um, it yeah, shouldn't be. I yeah, you you're on your way to the first national city bank because there's a bank robbery in process and you've been dispatched. Yeah, it takes out all the, yeah, the, the concept's not that railroading. The idea is, is that you have a set of scenes to literally choose from. So it's a little bit a little meta, but you can also have the option to create your own scene. And yeah. the idea is I set the stage, I set the encounter, but the objective is emergent by the player's decisions and actions, desires. So, yeah, but, I, but at the I same time, I'm creating the starting uh, uh, state, setting the stage is what it's called. So I set the stage, I set the initial encounter, but you have to pick it because otherwise it doesn't, it's but, not something that just hooks you in the middle of an ongoing story. That makes that's sense. My, my question would be like, how does the knowledge of those scene come to the character, right? Right. Yeah. It has to come in world, right? Like, it has to be an in world thing that's coming. Listen yeah. to the police newspaper, radio. police yeah, scanner. Yeah, listen to the police paper, uh, bat cave, newspaper. Yeah. Those bat could be solution, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that, yeah. The, the point powers. is that every action, every scene that they create, tends to create a reaction or another scene, generating from it. And yeah, but, uh, I mean, that, this is going down a bit of a rabbit hole. But the idea is, I literally call it the plot gallery. And there's a gallery. Mm -hmm of scenes or or plots and you choose to engage that so yeah, it's yeah. a bit meta. for me for me like for me like the the issue i would have would really be about like aligning like that with player no yeah with how much of, how much of that feels like yeah. stage selecting in a video yeah. game and yeah how much yeah. of that is like explaining yeah. a role play situation yeah, yeah. 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 and and so the thing is is that so. i would expect my my in your game i would expect as a player to have my own goals that i'm pursuing all the yeah. time, all the time. Mm -hmm. to, to yeah, that's why the... I separate it into big plot, individual plot, and subjective plot. Yeah, or to, big. To bring back like the, the Castle turn. and Crusade game that we played with uh, Rick, and I think that was before uh, Crispy joined us. But at some point, like we, uh, I was with Big Bad, and we're discussing like those uh, Big Bad RPG. If you don't follow him on, Twitter, although he don't post most content lately, you should come back to it. Lazy, uh, lazy, <laughs> yeah, he's, but uh, he's busy with in real life stuff, I think. Yeah, but at some point, like, we were, we're like a bunch of adventure happened. We moved there, we moved there, stuff like that. We had a bunch of like fire, I run in the fire, like a bunch of plot unresolved. And at some point, we're just like organically there. Okay, do we want to go to this city? Yeah. Do we want to go back there? Do we want to do that? Do we want to go go after that guy? I don't want to work with this guy. And we're making our plan. And that's that feel like kind of a scene select, but it's us character. We kind of know what's going on in the world. We're like we we kicked the bees nest or hornet's nest, what? And uh and now like we said, okay, now what how do we deal with all those fucking ramifications, right? 
yeah. and we have to make choices. So that there's the scene select there. I remember watching that and I was like, this is really cool because mm -hmm. it's such a weird sandbox with this cool meta plot going on. And I, I was really yeah, happy. Bear in mind, those this questions. isn't an entirely new concept. It's uh, uh, Blades in the Dark that yeah. has this downtime game state that yeah. leads into yeah. a heist. It's mm -hmm. very similar, but instead of just always going into a heist, you have either a location-based plot you have a character based plot and you have a you know an event or a mystery or a whatever or even just an open one where the players are just gonna just ramble and just kind of mm. bebop along and the idea yeah, is, what is you the point talking about of that? i guess yeah. I, what's the what? what's the what's the benefit of making this gallery i guess well for one you you perpetuate uh, you you generate it from their choices and their past success and failures and the complexity of the world. Mm -hmm. But it's invaluable, I've seen, to actually put all the plot points in a row in the center of the table as like an intellectual gallery that you can look at. And it's like a perpetual um, recap. Like, oh, in that last session, we did this, okay. which caused this. And we mm -hmm. still haven't dealt with the, you know, I don't know, the Joker gang or something. Or we haven't dealt with that, or or this. I have it's one. It's more of a visual aid to kind of describe the state of the game. But yeah, but bear in mind, it's also abstract. Like I'll either sure. just use an image, like art, or I'll just use a title. They will no. I, like one of them is Atlantis, because one of them plays a descendant of Aquaman, who's long since mm -hmm. dead, and he just will not go to Atlantis. He doesn't want to deal with that plot. He's ignored it for years, not in real time, but in game time. Because another problem with continuous mm -hmm. flow games, right? You'll go from level yeah. one to level 15 and only a few months have passed or some dumb stuff. So time is yeah. constantly jumping forward and in between scenes, whether yeah. it's weeks, months, years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll warn the players, hey, it's going to be a five-year time jump. Tell me when you come back what your character has been doing. What were their... What were their side quests? What relationships they built? Blah, blah, blah. I was handling all these cards. It's like, no, that's not what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And so the idea is you get rid of all the small stuff because like the, the playoff you were, where if a play, like I've told players, I don't do 20 questions gaming. You know, like, are you a bigger than a bread box? You know, I don't do 20 questions. You don't bombard me with questions. I'm going to give you data. You act upon it. And it's the same thing for the plot. But at the same time, a lot of it, you're just jumping in. You don't know what's there. You just have a clue. Like if the bat signal goes up or some dumb stuff, you go talk to Commissioner Gordon. It doesn't guarantee what the mission will be, but you know it'll, it'll the advent or the spark will be Gordon. It'll be in Gotham, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that makes any okay, sense. So, um, so when you see the card, it says something like, Gordon wants to talk to you or... Or is it just oh, like, a lot of times there I'll is just, going I'll to just be draw a thing the with the Penguin or, Gang? Yeah. Or and just then be like the a draw players... to the ball John and say, okay, we're reacting to that. Yeah. So, so the crowd will say something like, you're going to go deal with the Penguin Gang. But then yeah. the characters, when they enter the scene, they know they're dealing with the Penguin Gang? Or are they going to... Yeah, like one of, the plot, one of the plots were uh, literally just I printed out art of the joke of the uh, Penguin. They never encountered the Penguin before, never encountered his gang. And I literally just put that in the gallery. So they're like, oh. So I know if I go down this road, do you have an actual characters that you are building on your own? Nicolas stuff? Camargo asked you. Uh, yeah, you I am. The world I'm building is is uh, is uh, kind of like a diesel punk world, but I'm not going to sit here and bombard <laughs> you with I've created this world and these are my races and they'll just go on forever and it's a bit narcissistic. Yeah. But I'm just well, using only everybody one out knows, of so. <laughs> Well, only everybody one knows way. superheroes, so that's the reason why I'm using it as a reference. Yeah. Oh, I can't talk about that. I think no, that uh, no. we. I, mean, I think that sounds a lot say? like um, what we did in preparation for the uh, our heist game, right? So we basically described <laughs> exactly what we were gonna do. Heist game? Yeah, the one where we were the traveler game, where I was crazy Johnny. And, <laughs> like, yes, we had a session zero where we were like, "Let's go rob this." 
Yeah. And we literally talked out what themes you're going to do and all that stuff. I think that's kind of like a cool shorthand way to do it. Where you're just Players seem to love that. Like I, I, I did that recently with my in-person group where we said, okay, well, let's create the setting together. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And we just brainstormed the setting. We created our own world that we're so going to. I could definitely see in. that being, I want to fight the penguin. Yeah, then, yeah, like or like I want to go to Miami. I want to play in Gotham. With, uh, yeah, I want to play with that, that's what happened. Oh, I want to play those character, but yeah, that's Fear City it. Two. If you haven't watched no. it, I it's one of my favorites. Fear City Two, we I just asked the players, so what do you want to do? And somebody said, ah, let's go to Miami, or I want to like why don't we have to we have to go find somebody or something's missing? And we're like, Okay, let's just do that. Yeah. That sounds great. And we'll start off with you going to Miami. Oh, and we want cops, I think was another thing. Yeah, and we want to like something with the cops and it was great. I watched it again recently. It was, it was it's a good, good session. Yeah. It's a mm-hmm. good game. Anyway, I got to run, guys. It's nine o'clock over here. Yeah. It's my it's bedtime. Right around here. I'm going to, I'm about to wrap uh, the show as well. Like it's almost three hours. And by the time we wrap up, we're going to be there. Mm-hmm. Thanks Crispy. to all 10 of you watching. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, yeah, is that 10? How do you know? I can't tell that. I see five. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> we have five. I was the benefit of the dollar. One of them is me. Five people. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, who doesn't have like, the fucking stream open? <laughs> <laughs> we we better wrong? see five likes on this video, people. Come on. Five likes. <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining me. Your crispy, uh, five people on the panel. Uh, yo, Thanks. Yo, nice yo, meeting you. Yeah. Z. Subscribe Thanks to for uh, Table Runner. Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Party on, Crispy. See you later. Yeah. Take, Take care. care man. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else it. people uh, want to add before we, or other question people have before uh, I wrap this up? Chat or so, if you have a... Mm. I got a, it's just a little extra question for you. Yeah, go ahead. A little bonus question. How do you narrate if someone has a danger sense? Oh, that's a good one. I Can I answer that? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Um, so like you always want to engage, not just all five senses, but the sixth sense as in the mind, not, not as in like, I see dead people, but like in the Uh Buddhist interpretation of consciousness, you know, the, the sixth state, which is the mind. And, and you just literally just talk to them about what they are feeling subjectively. Not to mention, you can always have it, you know. Can like uh, what, Black Lodge people? games, it's just a tingle. Your, yeah. you know, the hairs so, on the back of your neck game. stand up. But uh, you literally just do subjectively, or, um, you know, like uh, what do you call it? Uh, almost like dream logic, where you just get like little pieces of information, and they're meant yeah. to interpret that. So but this thing that we, this thing that we do, um, is we don't like to tell someone how they experience anything. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's, for us, so that's we try a big to more, describe like, the environment. Telling, telling then, what your character feel, telling what your character think. For us, that's a big no-no, right? Okay. Yeah. So because like that's 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 on the it's BS. Something we try to there, avoid, right? It's... Just like it, I tell you what happened. I, because... I, I, I'm a narrator. I describe what happened in the world. Mm-hmm. I describe like what is and what the NPC does and stuff like that, right? But you decide how you feel about it and what you think of it, right? Just like. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference between that though, feelings and actual thoughts and such? For instance, the whole like your character would know that yeah. blah 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 blah, and you're literally telling the player it, their character's thoughts because of yeah, world don't building, etc. You don't do that. We okay. don't. We, we we try to avoid doing that, right? Just like uh, <laughs> yeah. so usually, we usually the, you... what takes place of that is called co- is co-creation. Yeah. Uh, so if you if your character would know something, then typically that player will almost create what yeah. he should have known, and then they'll make it up yeah. with it, right? Yeah. Like and like, then, or like, if there's an I don't NPC, need to tell you like all the, I don't need to tell you like the med base on the fifth deck, right? Like, oh, you would know you know the, the med base on. The, like, I don't need to tell you that. Like, you want to go to the med bay, like, and then you can just say like, oh, it's on the seventeen deck, right? And just like, oh, okay, then it's there, whatever, right? Just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need. To the ship just got a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> or the deck got smaller. Yeah. But, uh, you, you might, you might, you might slide over a piece of paper that's a seven on it instead of seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> but the the for the how would you do it next? 
What? How would you do it? Danger sense. Danger sense. I, maybe in that case, I would do it like if it's a device, you know, like if you're like, like the same thing, I would say like your phone is ringing, right? Just like. So you're, you're wandering oh, through yeah. the jungles of wild hell. Yeah. And like everything gets quiet and like. Something's well, wrong. It depends. Are we talking? How do I tell you? Like, how do I tell you something's like the, off? Like the spidey sense, right? Just yeah. like something yeah. like that. Uh, you the hair on your neck like are standing. Yeah, the hairs you know? on your neck. Yeah, but uh, if, you, if you do, do that, this, like uh, for like, or yeah, if you do it like for a uh, regular people, like it just like you have an impression and stuff like that, then you, you have to do it to narration that something is ominous. Yeah. Am I saying that right? An ominous yeah. air. Ominous. Yeah. There's an ominous air. Yeah. But if, if it's something you that, get a like, twinge in your eye. Yeah. yeah if, so, if something like a uh, like character got like. Yeah, good. Pre, yeah, pre science, like, like, prescience, like, yeah. Uh, no, no, it's pre science, pre, pre, pre science, pre -science. Pre -science. Pre -science. whatever. Yeah. Then you can just describe like what the characters see. The same thing as when we describe about talk about hallucination and stuff like that. It's real for the player. You see that, like, mm. you see the name, like, Phil, mm. you see the guy pulling a gun, and now because mm -hmm. I see your name, and like, we know it's you, right. I don't see you see, you know, like you see Phil, the guy pulled a gun out of his chest, right? Yeah. Just say I'm going back to bad habit. Yeah. And it, because I just say like, and you know your character got those, those are uh, those Shoot sense of seeing the future a bit, like a few mm -hmm. seconds in the future. Now you get a chance to react because you know, like, okay, he said my name, like it's kind of like in intended, right? Mm -hmm. That's how I would yeah. do it for that kind of thing. If it's something like you. Because sometimes, you just like, sense if, something's if it, wrong. It's sense, you sense right? a ghost. Yeah. What? Floating around. There's like a ghost floating around and just making your, making yeah. you feel a little uh, haunted. Yeah. And, I don't know how to describe it. And if if you're non-specific about it, right, you can make the player make up what they're gonna face. They'll be much worse than you were intending them to fight. So they might yeah. party wipe themselves just because this guy had a premonition. Yeah. And that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. But like, like what I was saying, if it's something like Spidey Sense, right? It's just like, yeah. it's just like that for, basically like Spider-Man got like a, I don't know very little about superhero. So excuse me if I get something wrong. But basically like Spider-Man can react super quick to stuff, right? That maybe just yeah. should just be like handled to uh, mechanics. Yeah. Like, oh, you cannot just drive. So every time, every time. Well, yeah, kind of. Like every time there's something happening to you, you're gonna have a role to react, right? You're gonna have a chance to react and stuff like or that. Or you just always go first. Or you like, always go first or stuff like that. You have yeah. retcon superpowers. You have retcon superpower. No, but like now instead of like instead of saying like uh there, there's no backstab on uh your character because you, you know someone's behind you with like life. you change your description yeah. of instead of saying instead of saying like this guy shoots you, you say this guy's about to shoot you. Right, mm -hmm. and then can say dodge, and then shoot. There you go. You just like and build it. Yeah. Would that work? Sure. <laughs> That's how I would do it. <laughs> you're not answering the question I'm not asking. What's the question but you're asking? The one I'm not asking. Uh, let's say hypothetically, you and Crispy are walking through the jungle. Oh. And uh, a giant creature is about to descend upon you it's a spider and you're not there's no real indication of it outside of maybe uh let's say all the maybe all the birds go quiet i don't know yeah maybe that's the way to do it yeah but but that's but like that's not that's not like like my that's character and, and crispy character that, that, doesn't have any any kind of danger sense or anything so we don't know right we, yeah. we so you just describe that oh so then all the birds go quiet i kind of want you to know so mm -hmm. Something like that feels like uh, characters can see a picture, but your character uh, can interpret the negative space that the picture creates. You yeah. see what's not there, and that creates the image. Basically, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, attempt to drill down further, though. How do you yeah. do horror without subjective narration? Like even conditions question. that cause fear kind of dictate your subjective state. Ooh, fear. Yeah. That's well, you have to. 
you have to create like fearful situation and stuff that yeah. that's gonna make like, like if the character are in their mindset of the character if the player mm -hmm. are in their mindset of the character you're saying like if someone's magically putting fear in your brain or yeah. is it a fearful well, i mean situation? you can go that route but you there's even i mean i'm sure you've all encountered it. there's people you talk to and they say the right things they do the right things but you just look at them yep. and it's a subjective feeling like eh, it's, yeah this guy's Uncanny. either a sociopath or he's a Wearing somebody else's skin. Describe and it's, it's and purely like subjective. Uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. Describe describe like um the uncanny valley that's going on. Yeah, or if you can like if you can depict it, and that I think R is very hard to do. And because yeah. of that, if you can depict it. We had a whole stream about yeah. it. We have a whole stream about it, and we talk about, we also talk a lot about insanity and uh demonic mm -hmm. possession and stuff Charm. like that. Yeah. Okay, Charm. I haven't uh, in transparency, I haven't seen yeah. that one. What one thing we say, like, because oftentimes when we say we want to avoid like role playing in second person, when we call like a, when you're the GM, like you don't want to say like yeah. you don't want to use you as a subject because then like because then you're controlling the the the, the character of your player, right? Which is bad form in our sense. But we okay. came to like if if the character is being possessed and stuff like that, then it's not you taking away agency of the player is whatever possessing him. So in that case, it's kind of an exception where you can yeah. see, now you can take a bit Although of it. I still let, I would still let the player play it. It, it's yeah. that ghost. It's that uh, spell. Yeah, yeah. It's that. Yeah. In the same way that if it's cold, a character should be describing their cold. Yes. If they're afraid, the a good player is going to describe their character as being yes afraid. That too. Yeah. And it, like if it's up to them to show you because they are the best person at knowing what their character is going to think and feel. It's they they are the best one to describe. Yeah, same thing if you're injured or two, they should they should role play that. They should describe all the uh, they get affected from that, right? Oh, well, I definitely yeah. see your point, but um, mm -hmm. that by the nature of that problem, though, that means you're no longer you're no longer uh, showing them the world. You're you're telling them the world because you're no longer showing them that you know subjectively. And you're right. I see your point. You're no longer you saying mean? your character is has a you know a flutter of fear through the body. You're saying Okay, at this point in time, your character is afraid. Give me no. um, a narrative. No, 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 say there's a giant not. spider yep. on the other side of the wall, and then you, as the player, say, oh, "My I'm character afraid. is afraid." Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. except in a good way. Like I'm, I'm, well, not, I'm, not, you're I'm not telling you you're afraid. afraid. Right. I'm telling you, I'm not no. telling you you're afraid. I'm describing stuff that should make you afraid, and then it's up to yeah. you as the player to say to to decide that you're afraid, right? Yeah, and, and like, or that you're not because you're a psycho. Yeah, yeah. like your your players are gonna either be laxed at describing their their emotions, or they're gonna be absolute psychopaths. Or they're better. Would you uh, a question? Would you uh, like? I was thinking I, I would describe the scene as as much as I could and say like, yeah, like uh, Joe Farmer would be afraid of this. Like, you know, as a standard of how fearful is this situation happening right here? No, I try. No. I try to limit, like, really like, describe what is right. What, 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 like, uh, what's happening? I don't want to bring out like those. Uh, I don't want like suggest to the player like. But that's the thing. I play with people that we know we use to each other. We get all the yeah. other like all, we get like those little rules. They kind of like a, like unwritten rule of role play. That sometimes we write. <laughs> we do a social contract. <laughs> but like, and that's something oftentimes like role playing game like don't have any rules about role play. They have rules for like combat and mechanic and all sorts so of stuff. But they don't tell you yeah. all role play. That's something that's often missing. But that's you know, I play with those kind of people that we're used to it, right? And they can pick up on that, right? They can they can decide like, I don't need to be very. Uh, I don't yeah. need to to spoon feed them, right? Yeah, because again, the, the like trying to win, like we we're talking about earlier, and they have the a utility. The, the utility that you're getting is playing a character that's in that situation, so exactly. they should be wanting to be scared. They should be yeah. wanting to play how that character would react, and yeah, uh, mm -hmm. that's why you get you vet your players. As says. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Or just you know. Talk about it. Yeah. And that's where Crispy says, throw the players out. Get the ones that buy in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, well, you know that, and and you know maybe maybe like oh. maybe then you know sometimes like it's a matter of style too, right? What we what we're seeing there, like yeah. it's, it's it's we have a specific style of role play. Uh, it's not gonna be right for every table and stuff like that, and even not every for every every genre as well. Like some people like might be you know, we all have like our strength and stuff like that. Or I find it hard to do. Uh, yeah, we should do one. Yeah, we should do one. Should try one. It's it's I think lean 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 heavily onto the abstract description of things like you said earlier there's a spider behind the wall how does your character feel right instead of, yeah, instead of doing wall? that but like on the other side of the wall or whatever um yeah. like a giant one uh Hard instead instead like describe the sounds of it moving like you hear like skid large thumping sounds mm -hmm. in, in repetition right mm -hmm. like well what is that well that's like a 30 foot spiders legs walking around right you, you don't you don't say that you you describe the things that the the hairs the, on the limb well you, the you describe the stuff. the effects of the spider in the other room the, the things that you're you're hearing or or maybe smelling maybe you can smell the chitin or whatever right uh yeah you don't I want to be too uh give it give it away too soon yeah yeah you gotta, blow your well, load yeah. too fast because that, that's like, like build up bad, tension. Yeah, every, every like, because th then you have the, the the players through their characters trying to figure out what the the sounds are, what the the weird yeah. motions and mm. brief brief shadows are. Yeah, uh, premature you know. narration. Yeah, you, you yeah. always want to yeah. you always want to hold back. And that's a whole, always something also I, I stress, you know, because like we, we, we talk a big game, stuff like that. If we watch our game, like we make mistakes all the time, right? And we always uh, we always come back afterward and say, like, you know what? I said that at that point, like thinking of, like in the moment, like on the spot, on the, on the by the seat of my pants, whatever the expression. And then that's you think, of, you, you, you come afterward and say, it'd been a much cooler if I did this thing instead. And that's all right, mm -hmm. because then you can like do that next time a similar situation arise, right? It's a learned skill, but that's part of the game, right? You're not going to be perfect. But I always say that when you're a GM, you're playing the game as well. And playing the game, you're not you're not there to tell a story to your player. You're there to play a game as well. And playing the game is making up that stuff on the spot, right? And like reacting to what the player. When you have their player that are very active, it's very that that's where it gets very fun because they show you stuff and then like, oh now I have to adapt to that and integrate that to what we're creating and like that's where the game uh it gets alive, right? Just yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, there's a I can't remember it, but there's a Japanese word for uh, love for the imperfections or oh, loving yeah. of it, of the imperfected or unperfected or something. I should move to Japan. And the imperfections is what makes it. Um, Shit, you get all kinds of tail there. Yeah, uh, it makes the story more <laughs> valuable. Do what? I missed it. He may have to tell him he'd get lots of uh, ladies. Oh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but he'd have to work in the hotel. I don't know if I. Uh... You think I could? <laughs> so uh, I. Well, I can think of more questions, but uh, like, it, are we wrapping up or? Well, there's gonna be a show next week. <laughs> <laughs> there's that. Yeah. If you think, and also like, yeah, I really like answering your questions. Said, see. You can, uh, you can always like, uh, yeah. in, in the. You can ask them in the Discord, and they're gonna come back to it if you I don't want that, to show up and stuff like that. I hope it wasn't a waste of time. Yeah, or, was, this was awesome. Or if Thank you come back, if you come back, to, if you come back to uh, on uh, this video or so, and people watching at home as well, or people watching on the replay, watching live and stuff like that, if you have questions, leave them in the comment. I'm gonna come back to them in the if they're intelligent question and worth addressing. <laughs> and under three paragraphs, I think we address some semi-intelligent questions. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. So, the I center is not that I. If it's yeah. semi intelligent, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I, I would also best, recommend guys. you in, you instate the end under three paragraphs rule. Yes, no. and under <laughs> three paragraphs. Three paragraphs. Yeah. So yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up now. Like uh, we we passed three hour the three hour mark. It was a good show, right? It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I hope it was useful. And thank you for people that joined me. Thank you to people that uh, join watch live. Thank you to people that are gonna watch on the replay. Justin, you got something to announce? Like you're on Ongar's show during the week. 
Yeah, yeah. Hungar should be back Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday at noon real time. Uh, Eastern time. Yeah, yeah, like I said, real time. Yeah. All the other time zones are fake. Central is God's time. That's what we call it. Oh, really? Yeah. Phil, what you got going on? Phil the Trill, the channel. Oof. I'm putting out, I'm trying to put out a video once we, I got this other video, but I think it's like dated now. But anyways, <laughs> and then maybe a game Monday. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. We'll I see. think we, are we having a game Monday? Let's have a game Monday. Not yet. Not yet? We might be doing Wild Hell 2. We'll see. That, I thought that there was decided that we're doing Wild Hell 2. I said I'm not completely against yeah. doing Wild Hell Just do Hell it, man. Else. Yeah, you're being vague and stuff like that. I want to do it. Because I wanted someone else to say they were going to do something. But I'll do it. Whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah? Were you waiting for something, somebody to say something? something? I don't know. I feel like I'm just gobbling up all the spots, you know. That's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not gobbling up the spot, but like something like you know, rigged it a lot. Like I know I I'm yeah, the one true. that I've been slacking. I'm like truly I'm the one that I've been slacking. I need to run my you are for French. You guys. It's just like I need to uh gotta get that cats game. Yeah, I get the I get I gotta get that cats game. It's a backseas. Yeah. Uh and also like I want to do the this noir game. Right? So right. so Oh, so are, are are you gonna all play women or homosexuals? <laughs> Why not homosexual both? women, right? What do you mean, like no, gay no, female cats. aliens? <laughs> no, 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 cats. <laughs> you, right. you have a choice as cat people to either be female or gay. Why you don't mm -hmm. like cats, man? I I don't think they're masculine. <laughs> Lions. <laughs> I'm shocked. Yeah, so no, are you got a channel of your own under the same names in that are? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, there's That's been no true. no new videos, but I still draw and I still do commissions, uh, yeah, bad yeah. ones. Oh, but good. they're there. I I draw characters for people, and I like doing that. So, yeah, are you better than AI that. right now? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm not an no. AI. <laughs> no, you're better than AI. <laughs> you have to exceed AI levels. Yeah. No, no, that's yes. a, the, the the floor has rise. Uh, the floor is quite a bit. Yeah, yeah that, is, that is true. Yeah, <laughs> but you yeah. can and take like to be featured on Sean or Sean's channel probably. <laughs> you can take like just AI and then fix the hands. <laughs> yeah, true. Azimut, not a channel yet. <laughs> Eventually, a game. No, this up. is the first time. No, and thank you for opening it up. I I watched you guys several times. I never thought of jumping in. I saw the link and I was like, mm, yeah, click and. Uh, and then the madness ensued. Um, I don't have one yet, but um, it is going to happen soon. Well, I'm still cool. in the beta testing of my game. I'm looking to publish. Um, I not to be brandiose, but I think I really got something. Well, nice. good luck with that. It's and very, very, it's very, it's talk, talk to me about it when when it's uh, ready to be announced. And shit. I guarantee it. And uh, in case I didn't make it clear, I really did appreciate the pushback on the whole subjective because I find that really interesting because mm -hmm. you're basically telling me that um, I'm treading on the agency of the character by telling them what they feel. And I yeah. never saw it from that 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 perspective, to be honest with you. Yeah. So well, that's we're, actually we're, kind of interesting. That's the kind of thing we're pretty hardcore about. Like, <laughs> I'm... I've missed those videos, and I missed yeah. that uh, that stance. I haven't gone through your entire catalog. I ain't got that kind of time, but maybe one day. <laughs> just just, yeah. just watch the stuff with me in it. It's the best stuff. Well, I don't know if I can argue with make, that. Got to make the Justin super cut. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, but, thank you for thank you. joining me. Yeah. And thank you, everybody in chat. Thank you, everybody at home on the replay. And next week, I don't know what we're going to talk about it yet, but probably Friday again. We're going to tear, us, uh, tear off our skin again. So join us then. And have a good night, all. Bye. Take care. That's not the right button. Keep your skin. <laughs>